Season 1, Round of 10, Africa TV, Freak Up Studio Live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the round of 10 in the GSL Code S. Uh, the first time we've had a round of 10. I'm interested in seeing how this section of the tournament goes. Yeah, yeah, it's a very different format, so we will be uh, holding your hands throughout it and uh, trying to explain with some graphics and stuff exactly what's going on. Uh, I guess it'll be like a little bit harder to follow than the group phases that we've had for right. you know, 12 years at this point, but uh, it'll be fresh at least. Yes, it's uh, it's good to mix it up a little bit here. Uh, we're going to be going through uh, five best of threes to start this off, but we won't be able to draw any conclusions just yet as we end day one. And then as we go into um, the second day of the round of 10, we'll be doing group B. This is going to be group A to start things off. That's right, that's right. Uh, here's a little bit of information for you. So today's group will finish up next week. Uh, yeah, it's best of threes and round robin format, as you can see. Uh, there are different tiebreakers here, and if everyone ties in one, two, three, four, five, six different ways, if three, three players tie in six different ways, then we get a coin toss. I don't think we'll ever reach that, but that would be that would be uh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, we'll see <laughs> what happens when we get there, but you know, it's same GSL, but we're trying to 
kind of liven up the middle part here of the tournament and mm -hmm. kind of change the pacing of stuff and uh, see how this goes. And I guess we'll see if we keep this in the next year or not. But, uh, you know, a change that's welcome, I would say. Yeah, by the way, a couple new maps as well. And by new maps, I mean old maps, Nautilus 2 and Golden Wall, both right. being brought back in, uh, getting rid of a couple of the maps that we've had in here for a while. So just trying to keep it fresh like that. I'm actually kind of excited to see Golden Wall again. Yeah, it gave yeah. us some interesting stuff like a uh, Zerg bases in the top left and top right that couldn't be attacked no matter what you did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that too. This is, <laughs> it'll be interesting to uh, see that play out again. I, I do think Golden Wall did make for some fun games, it especially did. some early game games. So, uh, you know, those are some welcome additions here as well. Indeed it is. Uh, group A that we're going to be having today, Rogue Ragnarok Trap, Bion and Ryung. Very interesting group, Group B, Dark, Maru, Creator, DRG, Hero. Do you have a group that you like more than the other? I think they're both good, man. I'm especially excited for Creator in Group B here. You know, he performed yeah. extremely well. Um, and, you know, we do have a bit of repetition with the players that come out on top. You know, and oftentimes they are Zergs in GSL. But, you know, when you see somebody like that who's been grinding for over a decade and, you know, has dreams of, you know, playing... Uh, in a grand finals and maybe yeah. winning here for a GSL. That's always a fun story. But I think both these groups are awesome. We're going to have a quick interview, guys, and we're going to start right, this. GSL is having its 13th year now, but now the full league system is brought back to us after 10 years. So I'm sure the players have a mixed feeling of um, nervousness and excitement. So we're going to have an interview with uh, five players who will be kicking off the opening day of the round of 10. And this group consists of two Terrans, two Zergs, and one Perlos. So we're going to have an interview with Rogue, Ragnarok, Trap, Bjorn, and Ryong. Hello. Hello. All right, let's check how the atmosphere is like in Group A. All right, who thinks this um, group is really good for them? Who thinks this um, group is a happy group? Please put up your hand. All right, Trap, Rogue. All right, two players putting up their hand. All right, here comes the question. Rogue, you put up your hand. Why did you put up your hand? Well, you know, I had to look at the 10 members in the round 10. As for the tier list, you know, if I was to choose between um, Trap and Maru, I would choose Trap. And if I had to choose between Bion and this, uh, this other player, I would choose Bion. So I think this group is the best for me. Where right, Bion, you put up your hand also. You said this group is a satisfactory one for you, so why? Well, you know, in-game aspect, I'm not really um, too happy about it. But, you know, having a look at Rogue, I think I'm going to win. You know, if I, um, every time I look at Rogue, I have a really happy feeling and a good feeling. And in I Am Kervita, you lost to Rogue. Um, and that was uh, that must have hurt for you. I mean, it did hurt. <laughs> right, Ragnarok. You did not put up your hand. But according to Bjorn, and according to Ryong, he, um, Bjorn says that his TVD is not looking good. And Ryong also. So what do you think about that, Ragnarok? Well, you know, I'm happy to play against Terrence in my group. Well, the players um, sitting behind me, they're easy prey for me. But the players sitting in front, um, Rogue and Trap, they are um, pretty strong players, they're formidable. But, you know, as for the group, I'm pretty pleased with it. So, Trap, you also put up your hand. The sole pros in this group. You know, having a look at the members, I'm not sure who the, who the first place is going to be, but I think I will definitely belong in the top three of this group. All right, Trap. Bjorn, you said that your TBD is pretty screwed right now. So have you been working on it? You know, as the players sitting in front have said, I'm not sure why Ryong put up his hand though. The three players seem really confident though in this group. I think they really might be the top three in this group. And there seems to be um, quite a discrepancy between the players behind and the players sitting in front. Alright, Trap has always been um, quite the hot topic with his um, controversial interview regarding the racial balance in his prior interview. 
So are you looking forward to playing against Byun, who you mentioned in the interview before? Well, the first match is going to be against him. I think it's going to be a fun one. You know, I think he's not going to go for scouting because he said um, that against Parlas, you don't need to scout. Right, Trap. You know, Trap did mention that... Um, Trap mentioned how Byun said um, he doesn't need to go scouting against Parlas. He's pretty um, angry about that. Well, Byun uh, reiterating the fact that um, against the Parlas, you don't need to you don't need to go scouting. You know, Trap is the only part of Parlas player that actually goes for scouting. And as I mentioned before. You know, him, um, Trap having a Trap having confidence against pro, uh, against the Terran player. It's quite fascinating to see, actually. So Ragnarok, uh, what are your two cents on this? You know, I think Trap is pretty. Um, Trap uh, places a lot of emphasis on scouting. And I think this that does uh, put him at a disadvantage in the early game. So Ryong, um, you you're a veteran of this um, game. And do you have a certain player that you don't understand why he has made it to round 10? Yes, there is, and it is, it is myself. In the round of 20, I've shown good performance, I think, in my standards. And today, in the battle against Byun, I really want to win. I'm going to win no matter what. So Ragnarok, do you have a player in mind that you can win no matter what, you can beat no matter what? A walkover player? It's got to be Byun. I'm going to say Byun. Well, Byun, the most popular one right now. So Byun, do you have a player in mind that you can beat no matter what? You know, honestly speaking, I think Ragnarok Beyond, I think I can definitely win against those guys. Not others though. I probably can't beat um, Trap and Rogue, but you know, Ragnarok and Ryong dissing me, I don't get it. Right, so before we wrap it up, um, how about you guys go around um, saying the final words before we get into the games? Right, Rogue, you first. You know, I'm not sure about first place, I, but I think def I can definitely um, place in top three. But I'm playing against those uh, comparably weaker players uh, in the earlier matches, so I think I should have a good momentum going forward. Right, Ragnarok. You know, I think when I go up against um, strong players, I feel pretty um, more relaxed and calm. So I think today I can uh, play at ease. All right, trap. Honestly, today I thought it was uh, a match day without audience. So I was pretty surprised. I think the matches are going to be really fun today. And there are still matches to continue on, on next week. So I'm going to have fun today. All right, Byun. Well, they are all very uh, respectable <laughs> players. They are really good. You know, having the honor of playing against these respectable opponents is really good for me. So I'm going to try my best in my matches. All right, Ryong, the last one. Well, since I'm the weaker one out of the five, I'm going to try to play without regrets. All right, so that was an interview with the five players in Group A. One player will move on to the round of four directly. Two players will move on to the round of six. And the remaining two will have to look forward to next season. Excellent work as always, Andy. Um, so there you have it. The thoughts of our final 10 players. Well, five of the final 10 players here as we start Group A. Yeah, and here are the matches we're going to be doing today. We're going to open up with a nice little Zerg versus Zerg, followed up by Trap versus Pion. Then Rogue is going to play again, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to track this throughout and see where we're standing at the end of the day and who's really advantaged and who's not. Yeah, we're going to get a, an idea of where this is going as we you know, get through the first week, but we are going to be oscillating uh, from Group A to Group B and then back into Group A then closing out Group B. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm, you have any... 
any uh, idea of who you think is going to be top three here? I mean, definitely Rogue. I think Trap's a very safe bet, but I'm yeah. not so sure about the third spot. What do you think? Well, I'm waiting to see how Ragnarok actually plays. Like, is he mm. going to proxy hatchery every game, or does he have other stuff yeah. up his sleeves? You know, the way he got here was a little bit different than the way a lot of the other players advanced out of their groups. You know, the stars did align quite a bit uh, for Ragnarok, but, you know, this is a great opportunity for him to try to, you know, survive this part of the group stage. We're going to see what happens. Well, he's going to have to really bring his A game here going up against Rogue. Uh, definitely one of the very best players in the world still. And uh, looking strong, of course, as is normally the case with Rogue. Uh, but also, like, Proxy Hatch doesn't really work in ZDC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a thing. In but, fact, I'm know. fairly certain last time that we saw Proxy Hatch ZBZ, if I'm remembering this correctly, was actually Ragnarok against Scarlet, and she didn't even know there was a Proxy Hatch because his macro was so bad. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I remember, remember I told her afterwards, I'm like, did you know he had a hatch that was producing lings on the side? And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we've had it at some gold bases, like weird stuff like that. Oh, That's maybe, almost, yeah. I don't know if you really count that as a Proxy Hatch or more of like, you know, quick grab and an expansion yeah. to try to accelerate uh, an advantage here. Probably that, yeah. Um, so going into this, I mean, I think it's a very likely 2-0 here for Rogue. Uh, if it's anything other than a 2-0, it's going to be a big surprise, and it could yeah. make for a very interesting story here for Ragnarok. Yeah, and every map, by the way, really matters here. Right. So very important for both players. 2022 GSL Season 1. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, row. Alpha X, Ragnar row. Okay, let's get into this. I mean, again, you look at a player like Ragnarok, he's very good. He's consistently in uh, GSL. But to compare him to Rogue, I mean, Rogue is basically the best Zerg we have in this region. And mm -hmm. on, on some days, probably one of the best Zergs easily in the world. Yeah, of you course, know. of course. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, Ragnarok, this should be a hard game for him. This should be a hard match for him. Rogue, well, Rogue is basically always the favorite of everything, so. By the way, guys, we got an audience here today. Yeah, isn't that it's, weird? It's a small one. It's bit, it's kind of trippy, man. I mean, even though the majority of this show has been with a live audience, it's so cool to have stuff in Seoul kind of coming back to normal. Things are starting to stay open late. You can gather with more people. You know, Omicron was burning through the country for the past few weeks. It still is. Um, but yeah, those of you who made it down here, welcome. And those of you watching at home, um, our studio is open. Yeah. Unless yeah, we say down. otherwise, come on down. Somebody asked me earlier if there's uh, ticket prices. I actually don't know. Do we charge tickets? Uh, GSL is not charging for tickets. Okay. So. Okay. It is free to get into GSL. I, believe, I, I think uh, even when on ASL has tickets, I believe it is five dollars still. Or something yeah, like it's basically just enough so that, uh, you know, you don't just steal seats or something. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we can't operate still at full it's, capacity. The, so. the $5 for a ticket for, like, ASL is basically, like, you know the fly they put in a urinal? Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> it's so you don't pee on the floor. Yeah, so you don't book a spot and then not you know, show up at all. But we can't operate at full capacity yet, so there's a limited number of seats. So uh, if you do come, my advice would be come early and, and you know, find a spot that can be yours, and then you can enjoy the entire evening. Mm-hmm. Be like those people at the water park who get there first thing and put their towel on the chair. <laughs> That's right, yeah. That's... When you go to the pool and yeah. you take your towel out and put that right in the best seat. You know, people do that at playgrounds here as well. Like on the weekend, the, some of the big playgrounds get like really packed and then you'll just see people's like stuff like sitting on a bench to try to claim it. You know what my favorite thing to do, Tasteless? What? Is sit down next to someone's jacket on a bench. <laughs> <laughs> because screw you in stealing a seat here. Yeah, that's funny. No one paid to come to this park. You don't get this bench because you put your jacket <laughs> you on You throw your collateral there. God. Um, so, you know, earlier on in this tournament, we saw 
uh, Ragnarok, you know, do a lot of proxy hatches, and you know that's in the realm of being a little bit sneaky, a little bit cheesy. Yeah. And um, sometimes, but not always, but sometimes, you know, players that do that, we can kind of conclude that they're not confident uh, in their late game, and that's not always the case. But I kind of wonder with Ragnarok, maybe that is the case for him. You know what I'm saying? Well, he seemed semi-confident during that uh, interview. Uh, one thing we should note is that he just picked off an Overlord for Rogue, which mm -hmm. I think is pretty impactful here because he is going for uh, an all-in here, right? Yes. Like it's two base, he's got his Rotorn, he has speed uh, on the way for his Lings. He's making a lot of Zerglings right now. He has this walled off. Uh, but I think that Rogue's build is actually quite strong here. He's getting Carapace, a lot of Lings off his three hatches, and he is making a Roach Warren. So I think that this is, it looks better for Rogue right now, but Ragnarok is getting a Baneling Ness. So it, like, he, I think he's not going to make any roaches. He's just going to go, like, all in with Ling Bane. Yeah, yeah, this whole uh, setup at the entrance is is to try to, it's there to throw a uh, rogue off. So we're going to yeah. see if this works. I mean, this rush is about to activate, uh, and we're going to see these Lings just explode out here. Um, and probably targeting either the natural or the third base here of Rogue. Uh, where Rogue has been watching carefully, but, you know, he's almost trying to punish the fact that you know, Rogue would be so observant here. So, you know, out of nowhere, these links come out. Uh, in this game, Ragnarok actually in investing quite a bit in mm -hmm. faking this, you know, getting missile attack, getting a Roach Warren and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's going to come up here, and for now, it looks like Rogue is going to abandon the position uh, over here with these, uh, with the hatchery, as there's just no way for now, at least, to recover that. Now, there's a Baneling's Nest that's been made, and Baneling's are now hatching mm -hmm. over here. And these lings for Rogue are in a very inconvenient position. He decides to, instead of committing to the third base, running over here into the natural, but it's blocked off. So he's going to come back and try to hit the third now. Yeah, really good micro on both Ooh. sides. Wow, comes very, very close there. Uh, and Rogue being very smart as well. He's just giving up this hatchery as he really does need to, uh, going into Roaches himself. And, you know, that's that's going to be his defense against those, those Banelings. But... One thing Ragnarok did during this is he actually got plus one range. So right. he's going to be able to make a transition here into Roaches as well. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I thought this would have gone a little bit better here for Ragnarok. I mean, it's you know it sort of works so far. He did get rid of the hatchery, but you kind of need to do more than that because already Rogue is basically in a recovery mode here. Uh, once again, a kill on that hatch, by the way, not a cancel. Uh, another little victory there. Um, and... and can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why? Did you have a problem, Tasis? <laughs> I think our Tosis accidentally turned off our microphones with I his kicked, foot. I kicked the button. All right, production, don't My worry. My little legs were just kicking out, yeah. man. I was so excited. Our, like, well, our, Ragnarok has his hatchery finishing. When the gamers attack each other, our Tosis can't control himself, yeah. so he kicks his legs around and My, claps his hands. <laughs> My limbs just flail. Yeah, yeah. I get so excited in these ZBZs. That's, it really is the best matchup. I want to point this out. That's the first time that's ever happened in 12 years of us doing this. Yeah. But it was it's that easy to actually shut off all of our audio. Yeah, here. I guess so. Yeah. Wow. I um, have a lot of power now that I yeah. didn't know about before. <laughs> you better watch out. I might be abusing that yeah. in the future. You ever just decide to quit, you just hit that button down there. I hit that button and leave. Yeah, <laughs> walk out. <laughs> like, oh, they never figure out how to fix that. <laughs> okay, let's let's take a look at where we're at. Ragnarok has his third up, and he actually has double Evos going. He's going to get well ahead as far as Roach upgrades go. He's up a couple workers also. Tasteless. It actually, it looks good. Like, this was a good transition from him. Yeah. We must uh, give credit where credit is indeed due. And that Ling, that Ling Bane attack he did was, was quite strong. It knocked down the hatchery. And it, it feels to me like he is in a better position right now. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh... So far, it seems to have worked out pretty nicely. The thing is, is a player like Rogue, I mean, he's pretty tenacious. So we got to see if Rogue can actually, you know, uh, get back ahead here. And even though I think Ragnarok's position is, is pretty good, I don't think it's like a huge advantage. You know what I'm saying? I think that it is possible for sure for Rogue to, to fight his way back. Uh, like you can see here, he has like a little bit more army supply and everything. But I like the upgrades better. Right. Or Ragnarok, you know, generally the range attack is going to scale better than Carapace. Right. Uh, but we'll see as the game goes later and later. Like, as long as Rogue can keep his supply up sufficiently to not die, uh, 
we get later and later into the game. And Rogue is absolutely one of the best endgame Zerg vs. Zerg players in the world. Yeah. Like, he, he can play Lurker uh, Viper better than Ragnarok, that's for sure. I would be shocked if Ragnarok thinks he can beat Rogue in that situation. Okay, some links are gonna come up here, see if they can come in and get any damage. Nobody's really expanded enough to where there's any kind of weak point right now. So it's a little bit of a waiting game, but there's gonna be fourth bases inbound here in a little bit. Yeah, they're both gonna be maxing. And now you see the Ravagers being added in, which is pretty standard for when you get this high in supply and roaches. You know, they're obviously not all gonna be able to shoot. You may as well get some Ravagers in there. The upgrades continue. And I'm just sitting here waiting for Infestation Pit or Hydralisk Den. I don't. I think we're past Spire time. I don't yeah, think I we'll think so. Uh, this is not a really great angle to attack in here for Ragnarok. No. We should have a little bit of an upgrade advantage, but that arc kind of does matter, especially in Roach versus Roach. Yeah. And so uh, we just saw the supply plummet here, 157 to 180. Yeah, I think he thought he was further ahead than he was there. I think yeah. he thought he well, was going to be up a fair amount of army supply, and he just was not. Yeah, but well, also, you know, we saw the lings at the bottom try to flank, but I think he very much overestimated his position. Yeah. And now Rogue is uh, going to expand out and continue to balloon his presence on the map. Well, maybe there's going to be a small delay here with this, but not for that long. Yeah, the lings are not going to be doing that great of a job at this point. Burrow and Burrow movement for Ragnarok. So it looks like he probably wants to stay on the Roaches a little bit longer, a little bit more dark-esque from the uh, old ZBZ days in his style. Definitely a Roach boy right now. Uh, but Rogue, we haven't actually seen the addition of anything else yet. Just the plus two missile. There it is, the infestation pit. All right, so Rogue is getting ready to go into that next area of tech. Yeah, and Rogue's going to be putting the pressure on over here. And I don't know if the game's going to end soon, but it does feel like right now Rogue could probably smash any of these. Well, I guess there's actually one base that's on the exterior here, like this one up at 12 o'clock. Uh, and, you know, he's now at the point where he's starting to bank a lot of minerals, a lot of gas, which means the moment that he starts to have supply drop off, it's going to immediately spike back up with all the larvae he's got banked. Yeah, the Hydralis Den coming right up here. Ah, a couple roaches going off to the side to get picked off. We don't see the hive yet here for a rogue. Uh, he does start a bunch of spines, though. So I think, yeah, he obviously sees those uh, those drilling claws. And going to start preparing for that with these spines. You know, it, the thing I really I do like Zergs that get this. When they, you have this many roaches, I don't see a reason not to get burrow and burrow movement. Uh, but here's the thing. I, I feel like a lot of the Zergs that go for that try to do it too much for too long. Yeah, yeah, I know Like, what you use mean. it a little bit, but, you know, you do need to go up to Lurker eventually here. You're not going to... Like, the odds of you killing Rogue with this seems low to me. Yeah, it seems like it's going to have diminishing returns over time. Yeah. Uh, now, Ragnarok's coming here with a couple small little attacks to try to get Rogue out of position, but, oh, man, it seems like actually a bit of an overextension there. Ooh. This is really good angling right now uh, for Rogue here. Yeah, and he hits some insane piles on that very thick army. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, it's a bit of a trade here, but honestly, I feel like uh, Rogue is controlling this extremely well, mm -hmm. pulling the Ravagers back, continuing to do a great job with these piles, and... Uh, even though both of these players have lost huge amounts of their army, you can see the supplies are very high. Well, the minerals and gas have gotten pretty low. Ragnarok actually in a pretty good spot, though. I mean, he can umbro these roaches and try to kill off some more drones. And, mm -hmm. you know, this damage really does begin to add up. It's pretty hard to actually keep track of those broad roaches when they're moving through your base like that, especially when you have so much pressure coming on from the front here. For sure. Uh, and the thing is, though, I think that Rogue, like, he has a big enough army that as long as he takes the fights well, like I would like to see him back up into that choke and take a little bit of a better concave, utilize those rallies as well. Uh, but Ragnarok's starting to get the damage done a little bit for sure. Yeah, he's starting to do some work here. Rogue is fighting back pretty hard, but definitely a lot of pressure right now on Rogue. He's still at 60 workers to the 56, so despite those drones that were killed off, and I didn't see the worker count earlier, but they were either remade very quickly or he mm -hmm. had so many more workers that he's not going to be feeling the pain of this anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, right now we actually have, like, 
the, all the lurker upgrades coming to adaptive talents right. and all that. So uh, eventually we're going to see Rogue pop out a few Hydras, make lurkers, and then suddenly these attacks are going to be like mega shutdown. He's going to have a very hard time getting in. And sometimes when you get someone that's this much of a Roach boy, they are just going to try to bile everything down. Which, yeah. I mean, we've seen Dark try that so many times, and it's just... It, doesn't seem to be that effective against the Lurker play. You know, it's subtle, but it's worth pointing out. Uh, down here at 6 o'clock, you could see that both the gases have been taken for Rogue, whereas Ragnarok has not taken his two gases here, and this is going to have implications later on in the game with tech and, mm. you know, the ability to develop. So as much as these, you know, little Roach, uh, Ravager skirmishes matter, uh, the follow-up tech and what you can do after that is going to be very uh, much advantaged to Rogue here. Well, here's here's the thing about it. you say as much as these matter. I, I think that these are like high school sports. Like it matters right when you start them, and then it, <laughs> if you keep doing them, it's like, dude, come on, you know, you're 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 30 now. Like you got to do something else here. You got to get into your lurker tech. And yeah, Rogue is doing that, but Ragnarok's still trying to live his glory days, and it's like. He just keeps making roaches. He's in his. Is he going to break him with roaches? Do you think? He's in the basement with a letter jacket on. Artosis. He, he is. Yeah. Uh, oh, force cancel over there. He still has his ex girlfriend's uh, sweatshirt right yeah. now. Yeah. So he's he's so, wearing it while he runs around these roaches, and it's just it's like, oh man, like what are you going to do when lurkers come? He's still got that photo on his wall of when he was prom king. He's, and he's still photograph. wearing his class ring, and it's like you're 50. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Oh, boy. Did you have a class ring in school? I'm sure that there was one. I didn't get one. Dude, I didn't even get a yearbook. I didn't... You didn't get a yearbook? No. Why would I get a yearbook, Tasteless? I don't know. None of them even played StarCraft. I, like... Dude, <laughs> I, I, I just remembered... Oh, this is crazy. I just remembered this. And one of my high school yearbooks, they were, like, you could put a quote. Yeah. In, in, in for your picture. Tell me you said for ire. I said StarCraft ruined my life. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh my god, I gotta go find this yearbook now. That's amazing. Oh, if I can find that, maybe I can call my school. Oh, that's, that's that has stuff. aged very well. Yeah. All right. Um, well, this game seems to be getting. I uh, wish I had had that foresight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I gotta say, Ragnarok's actually playing pretty well right now. Yeah, and you can start to see the, the hurt come on here for Rogue. It's really peaking up there a bit. And now that he lost the Roach Warren, it's getting a little bit more tricky here. He's gonna have this little period of time where he can't really replace. And like, Ragnarok needs to go for the kill right now, I think. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with Ragnarok this game. You know, he played a very different game in the, uh, the, the round before this, in the round mm -hmm. of 20. Uh, but it looks like he is going to come out and close this out. Yeah. And we were nice. wrong, man. The uh, the guy who's still in, you know, the high school era, he wins. The jocks yeah. win. No, that's the, a, that's the terrifying the truth of this, it. guys. The jocks well, win. That's, that's our a, that's a sad this truth gamer that we've actually show. known forever, Jesus, yeah. because StarCraft <laughs> ruined our lives. We try to act yeah. like they didn't win, but they yeah, did. Yeah, no, they did. They're, uh... We, we laughed at them for playing sports, but they're in better health now, and, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, Rogue is Rogue is dead. GG. Um, Meanwhile, our doctors are telling us we need to walk around more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah guys, the jocks won there. Don't tack into lurkers. Don't do like, that. Do you eat anything green? I'm like, what, like boogers? <laughs> um. <laughs> no, okay, so. I mean, Ragnarok ends up winning with the, the Roach Ravager, man. Like, he got in, uh, Rogue gets out of position a couple times. Yeah. I'm actually a bit surprised by Rogue because he had the Lurker den up forever and he never had a Lurker finish. Like, during all of this defense, if he literally gets, like, two Lurkers, man, like, just make one Hydra instead of ten Roaches, make nine Roaches and a Hydra, and then guess what you do with that Hydra? You turn it into a Lurker, and then guess what? Suddenly, the battles, your Lurker is dealing like 800 damage during, okay? Yeah, Lurker's, uh, Lurker damage is pretty good. I think he really should have tried to squeeze a couple in there, and he just kind of stayed on the, the Roach Ravager, and hey, you know what? Ragnarok wins that first map, so maybe he is the greatest gamer. I think he might be the greatest gamer, man. Uh, we're going to go on to Hardwire for map two. The ZVZ continues on. GSL season one.
Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Rogue. Alpha X, Ragnar Rogue. I can't believe Ragnarok won that. We were trashing on his lack of teching, but we were wrong. Well, well, yeah. And everything in high school matters. That's actually the only important time in your life. Don't get it on your permanent record. Yeah, that's, that's the important lesson. You know, that's our takeaway here. You know what I was just thinking about, Tasteless? Like, yeah. I was just like, for some reason, I started thinking about StarCraft 64. Uh huh. And. Uh, you mean true StarCraft? Tr the real that StarCraft. That was the way the game was supposed to be played. That we're was, all, yeah. Yeah, I know. Keyboards and mice, it's for typing? Like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. That's for moving through Controllers Excel are for games. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Controllers yeah. and cell phones You call are yourself games. a gamer, but you play with a keyboard and a mouse? <laughs> Welcome to the studio. We love nice you, too. Man. So cool to have an audience here again. I don't know. It's like the energy in the studio changes, you know? Well, there is energy here. Instead of us sad mopes, you know? Like, yeah. Instead of this, like, it's weird when we do this show and there's no audience, you know, because of the COVID stuff, and it's, like, just dark and quiet. Oh, and dude, the, the Jam Shill Studio is number one for that, where it's hilarious, like, when there's no audience there. Oh, yeah, walk yeah. Walk in there, it's, like, it's just very dark and very big. Yeah, it's just <laughs> weird and quiet. T TV sets are weird without audiences. They really are kind of these kind of eerie, creepy environments where everybody's yeah. super quiet and it's a bunch of people focused in on screens and... You know, you get the uh, it's energy. It's like my house. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's my house at night, man. Uh, no, but, you know, you get an audience down here, and people are having fun and they're making their evening out of it, coming down here. Still a little bit surprised that Ragnarok took that down. Like, he, well, yeah. he, got, he got the lead after his nice ling attack, the nice transition with the third, canceling the third of Rogue and well, everything, I but mean, it... The rogue was teching very well, like slowly but steadily. Yeah. Anyways, uh, well, you know, being a GSL caster, man, I've I've casted so many games of rogues where he just always wins that if it seems like he's losing, I just assume I'm not seeing something. <laughs> yeah, it's safe with some players like that. Yeah, Maru's the the king of that. Yeah. No matter what position he's in, I just I never say he's gonna lose. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's how you get yourself into trouble on Reddit thread stasis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> LOL, you didn't notice that Maru 40 supply down was ahead? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, an interesting start there for that game with Ragnarok. I'm, I'm curious to see what other games he's going to be delivering for us yeah. here today. Well, that that was very well prepped. And all yeah. the matches we saw in the previous round were really well prepped. And maybe that's going to be what his superpower is now, right? Because he hasn't had the greatest results. He's had some, like, okay-ish results over the years, but never anything... Uh, really to speak of, but this season is already looking like it might be one of those. Could be. Like, I think you're right. Well, I mean, he, he did very well in his group, and it was all really well planned with those proxy hatches literally every game, and here he is against Rogue, and his his Ling Bane attack was really well planned out, and the transition was really well thought out. I I do still feel like he like stayed on Roach Ravager too long, but then he won with it, so you know what? It doesn't matter what I think, because he gets the victory there. Mm -hmm. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of exciting because it's a it's different from what we're used to. You know, a lot of these guys that are doing very well nowadays are just mechanically so strong. Yeah, that it's like, yeah, look at that. Maru can do more than everyone else. Isn't that yeah. cool? He is just faster. Yeah. Oh, nice catch on that queen. That's pretty big. One queen goes down, takes a little engagement with these links over here by the ramp, uh, only to come into the main and try to get some drones. Oh, maybe not. Just loops around. And this is going to start to pile up. I mean, Lings are just inbound uh, and endlessly coming out right now uh, for Rogue here. Another Queen's going to go down, and Roaches are going to come in here. And we actually could see this game spiral into a loss right now for Ragnarok. For sure. Uh, Bane Lings come out, and oh, I mean, and a big Bane Lings and Lings of his own, as well as these Roaches, it seems like... I mean, I can't imagine this being anything but a kill. Yeah, this is over, man. The Banes are going to connect on the drones, and this game is going to be tied up one-to-one -one, uh, as he's going to take this Banelings nest out and mute any more tech uh, from Ragnarok. Yeah. Rogue fighting back with a very different and an aggressive style here. GG. We're tied up one-to-one. -one. All right. Well, Rogue will do that to you sometimes. 
A guy can turn on a dime, man, like right into aggressive builds. Absolutely no emotion coming out of Rogue there. Yeah. Ragnarok eating his bottom lip a little bit. Bit of a lip muncher. Yeah. I do that myself. Well, that was a kind of harsh reminder of who he's up against, you know. Rogue can play defense all day in game one and barely lose, and then come in with a super aggro build and run you over in game two. Yeah, yeah, but what do we see in game three? That's the That's question. The question. Well, I got news for you. We're oh. going there, dude. Oh, dude. That's exactly what no I No stone see. unturned today, Artosis. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should save game three yeah. for week two, Group A. <laughs> I think we should have each uh, set of the players only play the first two games. Well, I think games one and three, but three won't count if you lose the first <laughs> two. But the same game's played on the next week. It's really crazy. <laughs> okay, game three's ready. Let's go. Glittering Ashes is our map. 2022 GSL Season 1. I'm a rebel for life. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Rogue. Don't be a rebel for life. Grow up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's so true. You're gonna be a rebel at 60? That's not cool. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not. No, Alpha not. X, Rogue. Rogue. Listen, eventually you just have to become part of the machine. All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just the way it is. Okay. <laughs> Listen, pay your taxes, get a portfolio made. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we see another aggressive game uh, from either of these guys. I feel like, you know, the, the moment that Ragnarok tried to play, like, a, you know, a tempo game where he's just going to try to stay ahead and, and scout and see what's going on, it did not go well. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to just try to take control of a game by being aggressive early Absolutely. on here. Didn't get to read the sign, sorry. Yeah, I lifted it too high, though. Too so. high. It's okay. It was too Fine. quick and Look too high. Look at the camera again. You know what? Maybe it's the cameraman's fault. Yeah. Probably. They're not Partially, at least. Well, don't they're not listening Production to this. as well. They're the ones that press the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> they could have kept it on there the whole game. We yeah, could have read yeah, that yeah. sign three, four times. It's not not me because of my, you know, I can't read fast. So. Yeah. If you had photographic memory you could tell us what it said right now but apparently you don't taste no. us yeah anybody who's seen this casting of ours knows that <laughs> we definitely don't have photographic memories well yeah we have photographic memories they're just wrong <laughs> <laughs> like no, no no i remember taste yeah, yeah. i'm actually excited that rogue um i'm sorry Rangarok actually took a game though in the series yes, yes you know he might take the whole series who knows let's let's see what he goes with like i've i've liked all of his planned out games have gone very well so far. Right. Reactive macro is such a different thing than a planned out game, though. Uh, and I feel like we don't have that many planners in StarCraft II. I think it might have to do with the amount of games you have to play, and I think most of the planners are probably Protoss players. I think historically, yeah. Yeah. Just kind of throwing that out there as an, mm -hmm. as an idea, right? Because, like, I mean, a lot of thought has to go into a planned out game. And we've seen beautiful right. planned out games in the past. We're From really, race, you're going to go for just, like, a macro game. It's really about, like, endurance and kind of trying to get a read mm -hmm. as much as possible and, and play it out from there. Some wings harassing the thirds while queens walk to them slowly. Both sides. Banning nest coming up. And we don't know yet if anybody's going to pull the trigger and start to be aggressive, but we're going to be getting close to those moments uh, in a little bit here. Rogue got the creep tumor. That's pretty sick, actually. Yeah. Nice little victory there. Look at that. Ragnarok wanted the creep tumor, and Rogue just didn't even make it. Yeah. <laughs> the little things. I like it. Not much feels worse, I think, than losing that first that first creep tumor. Killing coming in for a full scout. Beautiful scouting job there. Yeah, we're just waiting to see, you know, where the forks in the build are gonna go. We've got the armor upgrade coming now for Ragnarok, where it's gonna be melee attack right now for Rogue. 
uh, to start this off. And the Roach Warren started a little bit earlier here for Rogue. What's that tall green and red building there, Tasis? Where? Uh, now green and blue over here in this choke. I actually have not seen what you're saying. Can you point it on, on screen? We, that right there. Hey, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that right there. You keep pointing, I'm not but being then able to point it, quick it, it enough, just... man. The observer's too fast. I'm trying to test something. <laughs> now, uh, it's been a much more passive game for both these guys, but I don't think we're going to see any action until we see you know these upgrades start to finish, and there's a, a moment where it seems like you could comfortably try to attack out and try to do something. Mm -hmm. I mean, good scouting on both sides. And here we have the giant Pluma Lings coming out of Ragnarok. Of course, he's getting the Carapace. Melee actually being researched here from Rogue. Kind of interesting there, the melee attack. Why is he getting melee, do you think? I don't know. Like, we've I mean, seen melee occasionally, like a long well, time ago. I mean, but it I definitely means you're going to have to do something early on to do yeah. damage, right? Because if you're going to get missile attack, that's going to go more uh, nicely into late game here. Mm -hmm. Huge connections over here on these workers. A big victory there for Ragnarok. Um, and so, but Rogue still with a worker lead, it's worth mm -hmm. pointing out. Whenever you see these attacks come down and it looks like, oh, that was great, and then mm -hmm. you guys see still ahead in workers, it's like, okay, well, Rogue's doing something right. Yeah, yeah, and actually we see now what that, that plus one melee is all about. He's actually going into Spire here, so Rogue going to play a very different game. Kind of like it. Uh, he does have some roaches out here, so... That can actually uh, maybe cover the fact that he's going Spire a little bit as well. And with the lateness of this layer, it's not like you're going to have an Overseer fly in and scout this out. So this Spire, I actually really like this from Rogue. Yeah, this could uh, definitely trip up the Ragnarok here if he's not entirely ready for it, especially because yeah. right now he seems to be in a position where he probably thinks he is in total control of the game. You know, having oh, these right. engagements and, and getting these little victories out of that. Do you think he thinks he has enough roaches to, to really... Yeah, I guess he does, because well, he's, he's moving, moving out. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, going. Yeah. But, and I mean, when you see your lanes. opponent start making roaches, sometimes you think, you know, like, okay, well, now we're both in the roach macro phase. Right, we're in this, like, roach arms race. That's a lot of banes. Okay, so this could go actually go either way. I mean, none of these units can attack yeah. air, right? So the mutas, yeah. uh, you know... They're a real threat, but at the same time, this might be so mm -hmm. much damage. Okay, so what Rogue's going to do Absolutely. to answer my question, he's going to just sandbag the entrance. Absolutely. He's going to barricade himself off and try to hold on because he knows the Mutas are the ace up his sleeve. And just the behavior here from uh, Rogue should be a big giveaway mm -hmm. as to what's coming, that there's some kind of tech uh, that's going to come out here. And I don't know, man. I mean, this is a lot of... Yeah. A lot of roaches and a lot of links. Yeah, you're right. And the this. Banes really <laughs> just tore that entrance down. Yeah, the Banes helped out so much, and he is starting to destroy everything. As soon as the units on the ground are gone for Rogue, he's going to start losing a lot of drones. Yeah, and, and there's nothing to keep them safe, and there's not really that many places to hide them either. 20 are down so far, and it looks to me like there's a very high chance that Ragnarok could just end this game. The Mutas come out too late and not enough. Uh, to defend over here on the ground for Rogue. Yeah, yeah, he's he's losing a lot. Now, you can come back sometimes with a Mutalisk build if your opponent doesn't have well, any defense, but in this situation with only 22 drones, it seems very difficult to make anything happen. I think Ragnarok can just keep on, like, sending a few units across and making him play defensively, and what uh, do you do from there? Yeah, Roach Warren goes down. Did he get the pool? The spawning? Oh, no, it's still oh, alive up so. there. Um, but, I mean, you can't even get across the map and do any damage because you have to defend these workers. So, I mean, right now, Rogue has been rocked. I think he's moments away from being KO'd here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, 13 mutas. Okay, I mean, you can do some. He's leaving some mutas at home. So let's see what he can get done with this. He's going to, you know, hit some of these lings on the way over. These mutas at home going to try to slow them down. But look at that. It's split up very smart from Ragnarok. I tell you what, man. Ragnarok is impressing. He's killing it, man. I mean, we're starting off on a very exciting note here. I mean, I yeah. think he's going to win this. Unless these Mutas can do uh, an absurd amount of damage. I mean, Rogue is, is limping through this game. And again, you know, you get drone counts low enough, it's very hard to actually come back from that. You know, yeah. you need to build up a certain amount of workers to have that kind of income where you're, you know, it's like the start of any 
I guess it's always best illustrated like in StarCraft 1 because you have such few workers. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it, it, it takes a while before you can do anything other than make workers, right? That's why most builds are optimized to always have workers flowing out and then you plug in all your tech and your expansions along the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rogue was down to what I think was about 20 workers earlier on, you know, which isn't that much the more than what you start out with in the game, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, he's he is working back a little bit. And, you know, he's he's remaking that Spire now. Uh, there is a Spire being made as well for Ragnarok, so it seems like Ragnarok wants to just go into his own Mutalus yeah. as a counter. He but Rogue to... sees that now. You know what? Rogue, Rogue actually, airplane? he might be able to win this. Well, like, seeing the Spire on Ragnarok's side takes all the surprise out of it. Yeah, it's one of these moments where you want to fight fire with fire, mm -hmm. but... If you see that what they're going to do is try to counter you with their own mutas, you're already ahead of the mutalisk arms race. So, like, well, he's making more. 15 right now. How many does Rogue actually have right now? Do we know? I think Ragnarok's about to pop more than Rogue has, but Rogue's going to be able to pop a bunch as soon as his Spire finishes. So, yeah, that's... And, I mean, his his worker count is in the lead now. Wow, this is a this is kind of wild. It, it really felt pretty bad for Rogue there for a little bit. Now, he has to be careful about these mutas coming by. Look at that. Yeah, at that a lot of, a lot of overlords on the map. I mean, this is typical if you go for mutas, is you're going to have map control, mm -hmm. uh, and you can defend your uh, overlords. But uh, he's not even going to worry about the overlords from now. He kind of wants to go for the jugular here. He's going to come right up. And what, it's 16 to 13. But, mm -hmm. you know, with queens there, the math gets a bit more fuzzy. I think yeah. that... Bro can hang on for a little bit longer here. Yeah, and he's actually, he's popping out his own now. Look at this, it's 20 against 15. And I think Ragnarok, by switching into Mutalisks here and getting it scouted. He bungled this. He did, I think he bungled it. He's a bit of a bungle gamer. He lives in a bungle, of a tasteless. bungle bee. <laughs> a bungle bee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My favorite Transformer, bungle bee. <laughs> bungle uh. bee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um. I can't believe that I think Rogue's going to win this. <laughs> My favorite Transformers, Bungalus Bungle. Prime. <laughs> uh, what were the names of the Transformers? There was Optimus Prime. There Bungletron. Bungletron. <laughs> <laughs> GG. Okay, well, wow. that's uh, why wow. Rogue is a better gamer than you and I. And Dude. also Ragnarok. No, that was, that was a weird series, man. Like, it felt like Rogue would win game... Uh, the, the, the Roach game game one, and then it felt like Ragnarok could win game three there. After he got him down to like 22 drones, and Rogue had to leave five mutas at home and send eight mutas across the map, and yeah. you know, he was down to like 20 drones there. I don't feel like that's the way he needed to play. Like, nothing mandates. Oh, for like, oh. Ragnarok? Yeah. yeah. I think he was looking, because he killed the Spire. So I think he's like, yeah. more mutas kills less mutas. And but Rogue just remade the spire. It, like he, yeah. he scouted Rogue it, committed and, to his tech. And yeah, which I think was actually probably the best play. So certainly some mistakes there from Ragnarok. But yeah. an interesting series. Guys, short break. We come back. Trap versus Beyond.
right behind us And there's still mountains coming up ahead The past cannot define us No, if we let it give us strength instead She tell what I need to me I say it in the lake beer Today's matchup. Rogue. Struggler Rogue. Trap. Beyond. Beyond. Most competitive. One versus one game. Africa TV Freak Up Studio Live. GSL Season 1. Code S. <laughs> oh, we have fun here. Guys, welcome you back. You have fun here. <laughs> We've been playing chess against each other on our phones on these breaks. <laughs> I just made a great move. Taste this is such a tryhard. It's yeah. really embarrassing. I'm, I'm more of a board game gamer, you know. You definitely yeah. are. And I am so bored of gaming <laughs> with you. <laughs> All right, so far we have Rogue in the lead. 
with a singular point. Ragnarok right. almost had that series. It was an interesting one, actually. Really kind of it, fun and back and forth and dynamic. It was better than I thought it was going to be, to be totally honest. Yeah, I was, was like, pleasantly surprised nice. by that. Uh, and this next one should be fun as well. Um, so we're going to have Trap versus Beyond next. And, you know, see what... Uh, Beyond can do against Trap. I do think that Trap is considerably favored here. Would you agree with that, Artosis? Uh, he should be, but I don't think he played very well in the last round, honestly. That's true. Uh, I was I was not highly impressed with the level that he brought, whereas normally he's the best in the world. Uh, so yeah, it, I guess we'll see what he's going to bring here today. Okay, guys. Uh, I mean, Beyond, this guy, everybody loves Beyond. He's charismatic. Uh, he's got really inspirational play, I would say. I mean, no meme intended here, but like top three control. <laughs> you know, he's, he's great uh, at engagements, but he hasn't been looking as strong as of late. We have seen Beyond have some wrist issues in the past. I don't know if that's going to be a factor today, but I just want to put that out there in case we do have an abrupt pause. It's most likely that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Trap, you're right. He did look a little bit shaky in the previous round, but every new game is a moment to turn a new leaf and alter your play. And I think this should be a Trap favored match, but let's see what happens. 2022 GSL Season 1. Shopify Rebellion, Beyond. All right, so here's an insane stat. Please. From my boy, Kochanfe. He sends me some GSL stats sometimes that are absolutely ludicrous. Here's this one. You know the Nesty Ore? Yeah, of course. Right? With 10 consecutive GSL code S's. Uh -huh. He was the first person to achieve that. Uh, and, you know, that was super impressive. At this point, we have a lot of players that have done that. And then we had the Parting Award, which isn't really as celebrated, I guess. Hey, guys. Well, welcome. Texas, welcome. Oh, excellent, yeah. Uh, the Parting Award, 10 consecutive round of 16s. He was the first player to do that. Mm, yeah. Okay. If Trap doesn't get dead last in his group, there has to be a new award because he will be the first player in GSL history after 12 years to hit 10 consecutive round of eights. Damn. That, that is, is crazy. That is, that is a real the feat. most consistent player by far. It's funny because when I go back in my memory and think, I'm like, yeah, I guess he's always there. He's always, he's always there. there. Dude, here's his last last 10. Round of four, second, second. Round of eight, round of eight, round of eight, round of four, second, round of four in the last nine seasons of Code S. The guy is a damn monster, and it's actually, like, he deserves a Code S victory. Seriously. It's crazy. I mean, he's keeping the whole Protoss race on lock, man. Yeah. He's killing it. But, yeah, that's... He, that is like insanity, and you can't imagine getting dead last in this group, right? It's like yeah. impossible. No, I mean, I, yeah, it's it's hard to imagine a world where that's the results that we're gonna get here. Yeah, or and even get going the, into the first match, I think he's clearly favored against Beyond. I think he's a stronger player. Mm -hmm. And if he, you know, if it does go poorly, he'll get the Supernova Award. Remember that? Supernova yeah, is gonna be a, the second Nesty Award winner, and after nine seasons, he found it. It was so sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's back when we had Kode as well, and That's it was right. just like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, in this game, we've got the Twilight Council coming here. Um, did, did we get a Robo made, or maybe not yet, but you know, this is looking like a pretty normal build. You know, basically just getting enough Stalkers to be safe, getting blinks so that you can engage and drops and stuff like that, and then, you know, um, trying to get a third base, and. We'll see how exactly Bion wants to play this. Uh, it does yeah. seem like we have a lot of games where the Protoss basically oh. makes, you know, ending the game the Terrence problem. Mm -hmm. You kind of just keep, uh, you know, collecting more and more splash damage and growing out on the map, and you know, the Terrence trying to put an end to it. Not every game. I mean, we definitely have these moments where players have tried to come in uh, and do a rush or do an attack onto, uh, you know, one of these other uh, you know, onto a two-basing Terran, but I don't think it's going to be that case in this game. 
Well, in this particular game, right, like, uh, Bion is going for his three racks play, which he, you know, Bion probably likes three racks uh, TVP more than anyone, and probably always has, really. He loves getting a bunch of bio out early on. Uh, now, how he utilizes that bio is going to be kind of the interesting part here. Is he going to try to actually go up and cancel this third base? Is that going to be something that's going to be possible for him? We have an observer coming out. Stalker's still being made. So it's going to be uh, a little bit here before Beyond moves out. I mean, we've got combat shields. We've got Stim on the way. Our guess is going to move out now and then try to hit that third as that finishes. But there's no medivacs here for uh, mm -hmm. yet. And so one of the issues with coming out at a time like this, it can throw the Protoss off because it's not a usual timing. But at the same time, there's no exit path here. This starts to go poorly. Yeah. So, I mean, this... Most of these units are on a one-way trip. Yeah, th these are Ooh, these units are YOLOing here. This Marauder almost pickoff is just amazing. Yeah. Like, the Marauder is so important with this push. Ooh, snaps one of those Stalker necks. The Stim's about to finish, but it's going to be a little bit of extra damage on this infantry before... Um, you know, they're going to be ready to stim and attack in here. Now, I see the sentry going back. The stalkers are rushing up. And I don't... I'm a little bit worried here for Beyond because I feel like Trap knows exactly what he needs to do is just control as best he yeah. can. And uh, not only is he going to survive this, but he's going to lose this army. Uh, Beyond's going to lose this army that's out on the map. Yeah, I mean, most of it at least. And, you know, he was, he was looking for Trap to make a mistake there. That's... That's what he's looking for. Like, when he pushed up, he was really hoping that Trap threw a force field down uh, to block the bio from going any any further forward. But great decision making there from Trap. Does not bite, just throws down a Guardian Shield. And, you know, I don't think that that did Game as much as, uh -oh. as Bion was hoping for. And now Trap needing a pause. I wonder what that's all about. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it's going to be... We might need to... I bet you end up swapping PCs, Tasteless. We're gonna have to Trap swap. Trap does PC. a lot of PC swaps. Is, yeah, is what true. my memory is. Um, we are gonna have to probably go back on camera here. I guess I don't know what the the pause is for. If we find out, we'll let you guys know. But it was not Beyond who paused. We were talking earlier on about you know Beyond does have wrist injuries, and that can be a, obviously a factor in causing pauses. But this appears to be something related to Trap's PC. Yeah, I think so. So we've got our refs going over there. Yeah, they're going to figure it out. And let us know here. So Trap I don't know how chilling. how long this downtime is going to be, but I'm going to tell a story. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I mentioned the story once on our, our podcast that oh, we, yeah. we do for the Patreon, but I, uh, I've been going to the gym now like twice a week, right? I'm trying to get back into shape. Yeah. And I don't know how what, what it's like in, you know, for the viewer at home, what, what the gyms are like in your country, but a lot of gyms in Seoul, they – provide you with a uniform mm -hmm. that you put on and then when you're done you take the dirty uniform you throw it in a, a hamper or whatever yeah and uh, you take the shower there and it, it's actually there. it's a great way to do it in the it's city it's good it's really good yeah um and so uh, i went to the gym a week ago and uh the, the clothes are like these black shirts black pants um so i i went in there changed put on my clothes and it was like there was like this weird odor and it was cold the clothes were cold and i'm like mm. That's weird. What is that? And it felt tight on me. I'm like, I picked my right size, but this feels too small. And then I realized I actually didn't put on the new gym clothes that I wanted to put on. I had picked somebody had just left their dirty gym clothes <laughs> on the table next to my <laughs> clean gym clothes. So I had put on somebody else's sweaty, disgusting clothes. It's, it's the gross. And I just started. I started dry heaving at the gym. I couldn't. I was like, oh, I feel. I feel so sick. I. I literally had to shower before I worked out. Yeah. <laughs> these dirty clothes. Yeah, no, I, I think I would have done more than shower. I think I would have shaved my entire body. I wanted like to light myself it. on fire. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Even then, you um, wouldn't be clean for something that nasty. It was, it was so disgusting. Yeah. Like, I kept... No, it's... Every time I think about it when I was trying to exercise in the gym, I'd be like, <gasps> like, you know, trying not to... Uh, did you did you catch that in production? What did they say? The PC is lagging. PC is lagging. Okay, so switching. We will PC. switch out the PCs. Called it. But uh, that, that's my uh, that's my story. Dude, for this break. That's, that was it's the grossest thing I can even think of having happen. It's so gross, and I had never even thought of 
thought of something like that before, but accidentally putting on someone else's dirty gym it's clothes. It's just like there's something about like it's sweaty, dirty gym clothes. They're like the dirtiest thing, you know? Yeah. It's super gross, it's, right? It's like think about it, this. There's there's some guy at that gym tasteless that has to wash all those dirty clothes. He probably wears gloves. Oh, no doubt. He wears gloves. He's probably tasteless. not paid enough. And you know what? He's he our never unsung does tasteless is he never puts them on he because never he's puts not them. nasty. He never like thinks you about it. Oh, man. When I put it on, too. Well, it was weird because initially I was like, did I just like gain a lot of weight in a week? Like, why is this so tight? You know? And then I'm like, and I just see my clean clothes there. And I just looked at myself in the mirror and I started going like, <laughs> it was rough. Yeah. That Aren't is. you glad that we had to uh, pause the game now? <laughs> I'm really glad, dude. There's a whole bunch of people watching Jeez. all over the world with their skin crawling right now from yeah. that story. I wonder if other countries do clothes at the gym for you. I feel like in the U.S., you know, I'm not in the U.S. that much anymore, but I, I always remember having to bring my own clothes. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I never was really in a gym there. But, uh, yeah, I th the thing is as well, like if you have a car, you could just like have your – Gym clothes in the car, I guess. Yeah, but I think it's more accommodating to like the, in a city. the city life, where it's like you don't want to be carrying a gym bag all around the. Yeah, yeah, the and city. you don't want you know I like I carry a backpack, but I don't want to have stinky clothes in it. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you had worked out and those clothes how badly they would have smelled at that point. Oh, when my stink mixes with whoever's, and th clearly this person's uh, a disgusting piece of garbage because <laughs> they didn't they didn't even put their dirty clothes in the hamper. They like just took off their clothes and were like. Yeah, <laughs> and just <laughs> left. So oh, then man. you would have the kind of the tasteless workout. What if stink. the guy like took his? That's clothes probably how the next pandemic's going to start. <laughs> yeah, somebody else puts on somebody sure. else's dirty clothes, and it's like, well, that's just but you know, what germs he, mixing in a way we have never seen. What if he put them there, and then he went to take a shower and he came back, and they were gone? He's like, huh, I guess someone picked that up. Well, no, I mean he just the hamper's right by the shower. It's not like these are all, mm. you know, in separate places. So he just, like, left them right there. He's he's That's a gross. piece of garbage. Yeah, I know that. He's a bad person. It, His parents person. raised him wrong. Yeah. Artosis. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's there are things, like, you know, as a society, we live in a society, uh, and mm -hmm. there's, like, certain things that you need to do and not do. Like, for instance, if your dog poops in a city, you need to pick it up. And there's so many people that don't, and you're all trash. All of you. Yeah. All of you. Uh, and and you, you know have you to pick, pick it up. that up. So the trick to picking up the dog poop is you take one of these plastic bags and yeah. you put it in your hand, and then you pick up the poop, yeah. and then you do one of these magic tricks that's where you right. flip it, yeah, and, and then you, you wrap it, wrap it, and that's it, and it's it's done. And, and you, you put you, it in your pocket. You've done what you, and you need go to, to the do gym as a human. You put it in one of those pant pockets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had I had something happen to me. I don't know if I've actually told this story or not, but okay. I was at one of these breakfast places, where, like in a hotel or something, right, where it's like the public area and it's like there's a toaster and uh, you know here's it's like a buffet and, and you got like you little know, cereals not, and yeah, fruits and that stuff type of thing. Yeah. like one of those things it's not that good or anything but you know it is what it is and there's a, a fair amount of people in there i don't know like seven eight people or something like mm -hmm. that it's not super fancy or anything and i put toast in the toaster and i was going around getting the rest of my food and the toast popped and a guy walked over and took the toast and i was just like i was just that staring and i'm like that's insane. That's that is that guy's a serial. I didn't even that say guy's anything. a serial killer. He's that a serial guy killer. It probably uh, is capable of, of unbelievable horrors. <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable horrors. horrors. But it was one of the most what shocking things. Going, to the imagine point where that that comes up. You're like, oh, I guess toast just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> like I'm, yeah. I don't know how toast like is that made. That must be for me. I'm sure this metal like, box is just full of bread that pops out all the time. It's yeah. like, and also what's crazy about that is there's not enough people. To where he could disappear into the masses. Yeah, no, they, that's he, the thing. There in wasn't this moment that many of people. What I would call pure evil. And it's that not he like he was engaged. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. And he was just like, okay, I'm just. This it's is mine not like now. there's someone working there, walking around and yeah. like putting toast into toasters just to make sure people have toast when they need it. It's yeah. not one of those nice places where you go up and get an omelet made, right? Yeah, it's not one of those. Yeah. So to watch him take my toast and be like, yeah, this is mine. Now, I deserve this toast. I think you should have confronted him. Tasteless. I, I think he might wear my skin to this day if I, I had confronted him. Would go to jail over this. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I mean, that's well. Here's the thing: you don't have kids to think about. That's true. Like I wanted to taste yeah. this, and then I just looked at. You thought I looked at a family. picture of my kids. And I'm like, I yeah. can't go down over this. I have no. to be cowardly right now. I got to go visit dad. You're talking to you through glass while you're in an orange <laughs> jumpsuit. <laughs> No, it, it's Artosis is prison jacked too. All sorts of tattoos. 
But that was one of the uh, craziest, like, what is even the word entitled things I've ever seen? Like, how can you that, even that's think pretty that that bad. toast is yours? That's pretty bad, dude. I, yeah, I'm try I think that that's the number one. Like, I still think about that. This was this was like eight years ago or something. I still think about it. Oh, it was that long ago. It was a while ago. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it was a while ago. And it's like, but it's still in my mind. I still think about it at least once a month. At I'm least trying eight to think years of a story. Later. That's a tough story to, to top, yeah. even. I'm trying to think oh, of one. It's, it's pretty wild. Um, I mean, what's crazy is, like, with my story, it's, like, the horrors of what can go wrong if you're not responsible. Like, you're putting poor tasteless in peril of putting on your disgusting clothes. But this guy is, like, he's taking somebody's toast. Yeah. And he knows you're going to be back in, like, a minute. Yeah. You know, it's not the perfect fact, crime. I it's mean, a, a high-risk crime. It is. And I saw him. What happens if I but go and talk to But what else has this person it? done in their life? They, they could be dead, Artosis. They might be by They've now. They've probably crossed. It's been years. You can't, yeah. you can't be they taking people's toast for years. It was just Artosis' toast, and he is thinking about his family and doesn't just take this guy no, out. No, I know. I know. Man. Just imagine what your upbringing has to be. Imagine yeah. if I took him and sat him down in front of his parents and explained the situation. You're like, wait, you just you took his toast. But here's the thing. Someone that bad. Their parents might be like, yeah, it was his toast now. He got it. Yeah, that's what we and do then in you're our like, family. Oh. Yeah, that's what went wrong. <laughs> oh. You were, you were from garbage. Yeah. And garbage so garbage, garbage you became. Uh, it's oh, a real thing. going to start. I was kind of having fun talking about this. Yeah. Well, well, if anyone has a story that tops that, let us know. That's pretty bad, man. Okay. Okay. So we've re redone everything. The question is, can Bjorn take Trap's toast and get away with it. That's what we're going to find out. Well, I don't think Bion would ever feel that entitled to so Bion definitely would never take No, he's a nice guy. Toast. He would not do that. And Trap would definitely throw the gym clothes into the hamper. Yeah. You'd have to be like a map hacking, stream sniping, garbage disposal unit to do that. Basis. Yeah. A, a disconnect hacker, that's what you'd have to be. Yeah, you would have to be like... like well, I just deserve this uh, win because uh, I downloaded a disconnect hack. You would it's have like, to be uh, like... Ah, you steal toast, too. Batman villain level uh, evil here, you know. Some of the Batman villains at least have a point. Mr. Freeze, you know? His wife and all. Like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been hurt. I get it. Yeah. I almost side with him, man. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes Batman is a little bit out of line, you know? All right, Metavax loading up. Do we have that tissue box up here? No. We used to. I want to point this out. Our tissue box is gone. That means somebody took it. Somebody saw there's it's a, a tissue. toast bandit. Yeah, this is toast. It's probably the same guy. We have a little box of tissues here in case I have a boogie. I need to get out of my nose, yeah. and it's gone now. People stole my makeup wipes once too here. Yeah, I remember that. We were like, where did this someone stole take my it? coffee once too? Yeah, I remember that. God, tasteless. It's a dangerous place out there. We need to get a real bad. Not even a freaking TV people. is is safe. No, yeah. Nowhere, nowhere's safe. Um, okay, Ooh. so you, you actually want to engage that? I feel like Trap exactly has enough to not yes. die to this. So yes. like, <laughs> this is um. Yeah, I think you look at that and you're like, two immortals, that much century energy. No. Yeah, you can't. You can't do it. And this can be the problem with builds like this. Like, sometimes you can catch them with it, but you look at this where Trap always has exactly enough units and suddenly not looking so hot. Now, in comes a Prism here, dropping out a few Zelots, going to warp some in as well. Ooh, this is this is pretty tough here for Bion. Yeah, uh, it's getting worse for Bion for sure. He doesn't have enough to deal with this. He even tried to fight back for a second with those SCVs. Marauder uh, overextended there, and I mean, I think he actually might even want to warp it another round of Zealots here. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I mean, as this many units come back, maybe go up into the main base and see if you can I hit agree. the third or hit the main again. He doesn't have Marines close enough to chase that away. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a gauntlet of structures to, to navigate through for that infantry. Um, but Trap is being extremely patient. I mean, he's basically just sitting back and taking a fourth, I think, mm -hmm. as he should. Trap's always been very good at kind of navigating a game and just consistently staying ahead. Fourth base coming up here for Trap. Attack moving through the map right now, or just move commanding, in fact. Uh, gonna lose several Zealots here, walking in a line, but he does have Psy Storm, so Gun has to be a little bit careful here. Kind of wasteful from Trap, like he loses every single Zealot, but those are some good force fields. Very nicely done at the end. I think that actually turns out well for him, despite the uh, early free Zealots. Uh, Trap 
you know, he's got quite the army, but he's got to be careful not to over-engage here. But I, I do like the way that this game is going in general here for Trap. I think he's navigated this very nicely. Yeah, I like the amount of Immortals he's actually getting here as well. He's about to have a fourth Immortal, and that's, like, Byun does like his Marauders, that's for sure. I think if you're playing Gumio here, he cackles, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't know what a Marauder is. Uh, but yeah, looking at this, like, that's a, that's a pretty darn scary army. Now he's getting yeah. ready to get into Robo Splash as well. I don't know if he's going to attack in, though, I think especially with the other Robo coming here. He's got more tech that he yeah. wants to get out, try to get some oh, Colossi God. here. Maybe Completely. even a uh, Disruptor or something like that. Dude, he's making, yeah, exactly, exactly. I could not agree more with you there, Tasteless. Like, he's, look at this, he's adding a second Forge. He's about to start producing Splash units. He's got a sick base for his army where when he starts adding Splash to it, he's in great shape. Look at his worker count, 77. Like, attacking in is the only way to really screw this up right now. Like, he, I like the zoning. I like him walking around a little bit. Maybe yeah, send some zealots in on the side, that type of thing. Sure. Something that you can get away with losing. But just buying a little bit of time, he's going to get up to an army that's truly fearsome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think there's any reason for Trap to try to over-engage here. I think, you know, we have the two Colossi coming out. Um, but he's definitely ahead. And uh, this all comes from that moment where Byun had this unusual timing to basically come out with combat shields and stim, but no medivacs. Mm. Um, and to try to kind of, in a heavy-handed way, uh, do a lot of damage to the Protoss. But Trap is so good at these balancing acts that yeah. it really had, uh, it did no damage at all. And in fact, it was cleaned up pretty easily by Trap. I think he's putting out a much nicer game than what we saw in his uh, last round group. Ooh, yeah, beautiful side strongs. Look at that. Pops oh my god. So quickly. Yeah, he is just getting melted. And I actually think this is the moment he's going to engage in here. Those storms are so good. I think he can carry this damage well, all the way into this. I don't know. Uh, this is still a lot of units. The Colossi coming down from the other side. But Yun is starting to have a reasonable trade here. He loses some SCVs. But look, he literally. Yeah, this is a disaster. This is, this is something I've been talking about a little bit for PVT. You can't be about to have your splash units and then lose your army and complain ever. Okay? This is yeah. actually this is an important thing for people to take home. If there's literally this is a transition point where he's going from sturdy army into sturdy army plus more splash. Like right. making a second robo, getting a second forge, and going colossi. Like, once those Colossi join your army, it's much, much stronger. And if you throw your army away while the Colossi are walking to it, it's just not a good move. Yeah. Like, if he has two Colossi in that army for that battle, it looks very different. So I think that that was not a great move. Not to say that he's dead or anything, but, like, look at look at his army sophistication. What if he had all this and four Immortals? Would that yeah, look better? But, I well, think so. Also, when the Colossi were completely in a, in a different spot, you know, I yeah. actually do think Trap is still going to win this. He's still going to stay ahead. But yeah, pretty gross over extension, especially when the Colossi were, you know, like 15 seconds out of merging with the army. Some nice micro there from Gyan against this little Zealot harassment, making that not so worth it. A lot of High Templars in here right now. Ghosts are trying to be ready. A nice blink forward there to try to pick them off. A lot of EMPs go down, does have to back up. Oh, nice feedback there on the Ghost, I like that. Yeah, nice storm over there. Five Good. Colossi on the map, Tasis. Oh my god. Yeah, and Disruptor's about to come out here as well. And it's gonna be very tough for the Terran to deal with, especially when the Disruptors come into play, because you can basically chuck these Disruptor shots in there uh, and stay at a safe distance, and especially with Colossi covering that as well. There's no way for Terran to engage this without eating a lot of damage. Yeah, that's a very aggressive blink in there, throwing down the Psy Storms as well. We don't have EMPs here to help out, so the Splash just getting overwhelming at this point. Yeah, and he's been boxed into a corner now. And, you know, the Planetary's good, but the Colossi outrange and the Disruptors are coming in. And I, I just, it's tough to imagine a situation where Byun can somehow engage this army, especially with the five Colossus, man. Yeah, like, and all of his army oh. is really badly hurt. There's no medevac energy or anything, so it looks like this is going to be about it. Byun unable to really do anything here. GG, uh, honestly, though, like, I think that Byun sometimes 
makes it hard on himself with some of his openers. Like, he really likes the three racks play, but when's the last time you saw him actually do damage with it? It's funny, because I feel like he was doing this literally like four years ago. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, he's always and, liked three racks openers. And, I mean, that that's okay, but I mean, he does this more than any other Terran. And I feel like Trap is built to not die to stuff like this. Yeah, absolutely. You is, know, yeah. I mean, Trap is very calculated. Someone like Trap with or Stats, you're not going to get with that. Yeah, where like there are players that you could kind of throw off with, with an unusual attack. I just don't think he's one of them. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Beyond's really committed to the style that made him big, which is he likes to engage early or in times that are not really in sync with like normal timing attacks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, even when I was casting that, I'm like, well, he's not going to attack now because it doesn't make sense. Then he moves out. I'm like, oh, right. It's beyond doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, never mind, guys. Sorry, but um, not, not a typical uh, approach to the matchup. We're going to go to Berlingrad for map number two. Um, and let's see what exactly uh, Beyond can come up with. But right now, I think Trap looking a lot better. Yeah, yeah, definitely looked stronger that game, but let's see what Bian opens with. Game two, go, go. 2022 GSL Season 1. Huang Dong Frick, Trap. Shopify Rebellion, Beyond. Beyondster. That's what we call him. That's what they call him, dude. And trap Arena over yeah. here. <laughs> the Trapper Keeper, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have on your Trapper Keeper? Oh, dude, I had a cool Trapper Keeper. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I had like a... Uh, there were this set of folders that had like uh, animals like fighting people. Oh, really? It was so cool, dude. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. I only remember one and of my Trapper Keepers. It was yeah. like jets, like, you know, like an F-15 or totally. whatever. Totally, yeah. yeah that that's one. a cool one. I did, when I brought that Trapper Keeper to, to school though, here's what happened. Another kid had the same Trapper Keeper. And this is probably the equivalent of showing up to prom and some girl has the same dress as you. Oh no. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, oh my God. It's probably even the same worse. Trapper Keeper. And I was supposed to have the best Trapper Keeper in the entire class, and so. That's rough, man. It was a moment of turbulence in my life. I can I can believe that, yeah. absolutely. Adults, no Trapper Keeper. I want to point that out. No, no, but Is they, there anybody uh, in the adult world that has a Trapper Keeper? Are you people know what? around the world going to know what we're talking about, or is this an American thing? Oh, a Trapper Keeper, I think, is probably, like, American, maybe slash Canadian. Um, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out, but... You know what? Actually, we had Trapper Keepers as kids. Yeah. But I was so excited to grow up and be like my dad and have a briefcase. Oh, yeah. I don't have a briefcase at all, Tasteless. No one does anymore. No one does. And if you see somebody with a briefcase, it's immediately weird. Yeah. I'm like, what like, do you? Do you have the launch codes yeah, in yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, you see somebody with a briefcase, and it's like, I don't get it. Unless it's like a fashion accessory for a three-piece suit, but even then, it's like like you're what a, do you, a what lawyer do you or you have like secret documents or something. In yeah, that. unless it. you're in the FBI or yeah. something like that. I feel like a briefcase is just a weird thing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. you have a smartphone? Like, what else? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Do you keep it in the Here's briefcase? Here's my briefcase. It can also take pictures and make phone calls. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh my. All right, so Hellion's being made right now as well as that starport. So Bion definitely looking for some early damage here, but I think somewhat unfortunately for him, there is a Stargate. Let's see if it's going to be Phoenix. I think it is. So, oh no, Oracle to open. Very different start here from Bion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's gonna have this coming out pretty quickly. Does he see this on the right? No, the, the yeah, vision of those shades, shades are not so small now. For a second, I'm like, well, if he finished it, and then it's like, but well, he's not going to do that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you go there and you see that there's nothing at the natural, you know that something is coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because nobody just sits in their base and does nothing and expands later because you just lose in a longer game. So the question now is going to be how much damage uh, can Bion's 
Hellion drop, deal, and I don't see a whole lot here to well, defend. There's the Oracle hasn't been sent out as far as I can tell. I don't uh, see it on the map. So, I mean, that can fry these pretty quickly, but Byun is getting good damage already. Look at this. Already five probes. Oracle is turned on, so you can make him waste some energy like this. Not bad. Yeah, he's trying to get that Oracle to burn out on energy. <laughs> the very red probe runs. Yeah. And the Oracle is going to burn out. Second Oracle comes out. And Trap has to turn that one on as well. Now, here comes the first Phoenix. So that will finally put an end to this. Yeah. Uh, so was it enough damage? That total five, right? Was that how many he got, or did he get a sixth one somewhere in there? I, I think he got five pro, and then he just got one right there, right? Right. Uh, well, his command center's done. He's making the orbital. 36 workers at 31. Trap is in full production now. I think it did all right. It, I mean, it kind of made the oracles, like the oracles had no chance for any sort of damage. It's not to say they can't do stuff still, like he can use stasis wards, maybe he'll fly in and just do scouting with it, but I don't think he's likely to really kill any workers here, or very, very few workers. Yeah. So, you know, that harassment aspect of his opener is going to fall somewhat flat, which could power up Byun's next push. So he's going to come up into the main now. And I don't see anything here to defend. It looks like everything is at the natural. And between the two Oracles and the Phoenixes, I mean, I kind of thought that was going to be more damage, but the Cyclones came up so quickly. Ooh. And he's just going to teleport these back home. Ah! Did he get that one? No, no he it didn't. lives. Wow. Yeah, everything got very red there, too. I wonder if we're going to see that Phoenix explode on the other side of the map. That was so close. Yeah, that would be nice. Nothing sadder than warping home broken debris. <laughs> So Trap's taking his third base and is looking pretty comfortable tempo-wise. Again, a very different opening from what we saw in Game 1. Game 1, he went for a very quick blink and tried to do a control game with Stalkers. Uh, this time, it was all Stargate pressure. Mm -hmm. Stasis Ward's being laid out. I think you look at this game as Byun, and he made a, a Raven, right? Uh, I think so. I, I believe he has one. Uh, or I'm just seeing things otherwise. Uh, but yeah, like I think you have to look at this and know that you're going to have a very strong push because these Stargate units didn't really do that much. But you have to watch out for Stasis Wards because he has like a couple Oracles that really didn't do anything. Right. So like that's what you're going to be using him for, especially if he's not like tagging you every two seconds. Yeah, I guess if you're getting tagged every two seconds, then you know that the map is probably going to be empty uh, as far as all those Stasis Wards here. Uh, and he just does a tag right there. Mm -hmm. There's is Beyond going to push? It feels like it's a yeah. time for a Beyond push, Artosis. Yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, I think that, you know, he should at least move out onto the map and see what can be done. Ooh, I like this catch a lot. Yeah, that's actually pretty big, taking out the two Widow Mines. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, but the Stace Sword, okay, he sees it there. He has the Raven, so that's really okay. important. So this is going to make uh, Trap a bit more brittle here. Oh, great, uh, great force build there. Just catch a few Marines, taking fights he knows he can win. Yeah, I think uh, Beyond though, his reinforcements are not coming up, which is kind of the tough part, right? Like the, the well, here a few do end up coming. Oh my God, what is that Raven doing? No, he is going to be able to come up here. Throws down some auto turrets there. Auto turrets certainly helping quite a oh, bit as he pushes I, these stalkers back. Yeah, I might actually just take this man. Yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah. But there, you know, some more stalkers come in. Zealots as well. Back he, come the flying units. These medevacs are just he, just barely healing everything. Mm. Where it's making it tough for Trap to have any good engages. Not that much much more for reinforcements. There are only two more Marines coming out at a time. Uh, but concussive shells is almost done, and that is going to cause a lot of drag there on those stalkers. But I think Trap has actually survived this. I thought for a second this might be the tipping point and the game's gonna end, but uh, he's still in this. Yeah, Trap just had enough of everything there. I think it was good play from Beyond though. He didn't like really overcommit. He was careful about the stasis wards, which were kind of obvious, so that's really good to see. Um, yeah, and Trap now coming up. A little bit more harassment. 
Nice micro there overall. God, man. <laughs> it never fails to amaze me. Yeah, what range. a psych look at getting this game. Sometimes I just watch in awe, and I'm like, seriously. The range of some things is pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got a little bit more pressure coming down here from Bion. But Bion uh, needs to be ready for this counterattack. Zealot's heading up towards that third, and I don't think that base is very well defended. No, okay, throws down. Oh, my God, the Zealots, yeah, coming in. Uh, but he throws on a force field here to stop this little counterattack from Bion. He did destroy those rocks to try to be able to hit up there where there's no batteries. Yeah, the orbital's almost done, but he's gonna have to lift that off. But even then, I mean, there's Phoenixes here. The army's actually coming back. A great play from Trap, to be honest. I mean, punishing the third while taking a fourth is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's playing a very smooth game here. Like, he's defended everything just right. The, the Zealot harassment did very well, I would say, right? Like, there's nine SCVs going down. His air units are still doing their job, getting some scouting done, doing a little bit of defense, a little bit of harassment. And the push is going to come down here now. I think Bion needs to do some damage pretty soon here because Trap seems to be just getting into a further and further a good position here. Great force field again, isolating one of those Marauders, getting the kill. Look at the control here by Trap. He is so patient. Yeah. He just sets up and he's like, fine, try to come over here. He's taking like perfect little arcs. Yeah. That's for sure. And you're basically watching Bion kind of bleed off his army. Uh, it's impressive how much he's actually macroing out, all things considered, but Trap just kind of taking every little victory and building that into what may be a, a win coming up here. Oh man, yeah, just enough zealots that you're gonna have to kite back. And I kind of feel like Bion should not be attacking here, but he is anyways, right? Like, somebody's got to be wrong <laughs> about engaging once you get to this little rock formation. Well, when you're shoving yourself through and there's force fields and stuff, uh, yeah. yeah, it becomes, like, it becomes pretty bad. Like, it, the thing is, if Bion could actually be on open ground and engage these two armies, yeah, he would he would kill, all, well, maybe not right this second, but, like, before that last one, if there's no rocks there, the force fields don't come down, he can, like, kill the army, right? Like, he's got a lot of army supply. He's got his great micro and everything. Uh, but, you know, Trap is, he's just like taking every engagement correctly in chokes. He's getting his arcs. He's throwing down the forest field, storming when he can. All right, another little attack up here. I don't think his army is suited to take this fight. Uh, and an immediate punish here tries to pick that up. Actually gets out with more than I expected. But it seems like we're in a, a place in this game where now Trap can start to come in here uh, and take big wins. He's ready for fights. Uh, and, you know, Terran is not growing to the same rate here. Oh, man, this is another huge attack over here. Great storms. Yeah. And too many zealots alone just comes in and chases that back. And more units coming from Bion from the other side. Oh Mostly my God. Marauders going after these Immortals, which are so low on health. Dude, he keeps picking that weak Immortal up. It's wild. Yeah. Not losing anything that's important as far as, you know, having a sophisticated army. I tell you, like, this is really masterfully done from Trap. Because Bion, like, you look at these armies, and it feels, it felt like almost every time so far that Bion could do very well in a lot of these fights. But yeah. he's being whittled down, his unit's getting low on health, and, like, just over time, Trap is able to grind him. Well, I, don't just don't, I just don't see Bion going anywhere in this game. Protoss is nearing a fifth base, by the way. We're getting Colossi coming out in pairs. I mean, we've seen this story before. Yeah, yeah. And now, the, yeah, the Colossi coming out in pairs, and he hasn't, like, thrown away his entire army right before they get out, so. Some nice size storm drops come out. Looks like he will end up losing that prism. I think he needs to back up, though, to not go through there. Yeah, these Zealot counterattacks are going to be a threat. I mean, even with the sensor towers, it's like, Knowing is, is nice, but, you know, can you stop it? I don't know. It seems like Trap is really beginning to cement his position. But there's still hope for Bion. He's got quite a bit. Uh, you know, and it, with the Ghost here and EMP available, maybe he could take a fight. The problem is, is that this isn't going to help against all the Colossi that are here. Yeah, the flank coming out is oh way too much. You're not going to be able to do anything right there. And look, he's Bion is trying to lure him in back into traps, right? Like, he gets all these EMPs off. 
There's a lot of charge lots in there. Oh, I love that. I love that as a heal right there, by yeah. the way. Just throwing down the uh, overcharge and walking back to it. Anyways, but he tried to drag Trap back into those mines where he could, like, make it a shooting gallery and yeah. get the splash damage. And Trap just turns around. He just backs up. It's like, no. He just he, Trap is just masterfully taking the right engagements this game. Yeah. Really, really well done. Honestly, it feels like Bion played a, a better game this this time than last time. But just Trap was really on top of everything. Yeah, I mean, Trap played a masterful game here. And this is going to be ending in a second. I mean, there's just no way to recover. And, yeah. you know, it's tough. I mean, Bion was not able to build up an army that can compete with what, you know, Trap has to offer here. So GG, Trap takes game two and wins in a pretty impressive fashion. But... We kind of expected that result going into this. Yeah, yeah, it definitely did. And it's good to see Trap playing a bit better than he did in his group the other night. Uh, didn't He didn't look that fantastic uh, last week, but here he is and looking very, very strong. And in fact, he's the group leader now after a 2 -all. Yeah, very well positioned uh, going into this group. Tough game for Bion. Everything he tried just didn't work. Yeah. And it almost made it look like you're not supposed to do that at all. You know, it was one of those games mm. where it's like, well, this just doesn't seem to be an applicable idea. Yeah, the areas like he trapped. was trying to go in through, like Trap just punished him over and over. Short break, guys. We'll be right back.
힘들어도 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 보여 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 언어 레벨 86 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 보여 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 언어 레벨 86 달달한 충전이 필요할 땐 칸타타 힘들어도 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 보여 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 어느 레벨 86 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 보여 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 어느 레벨 86 달달한 충전이 필요할 땐 칸타타 Today's matchup Rogue Struggler Rogue Trap Beyond Beyond Most competitive One versus one game. Oh, guys, it's so cool to have an audience down here. Even if it's yeah. a small one, welcome those of you in the studio. And those of you at home, don't forget, you can come see GSL live. Yeah, well, if you can be there. Uh, yeah, and actually, I think at this point, you don't have to quarantine when you fly into the country, right? I, I actually don't know. I, I don't want to say, like, no, because then someone's going to get on an airplane and come here and well, if they do be that, trapped in a hotel room for, like, seven days. Never take financial advice from Tasels. Yeah. Uh, no, take all financial advice. I'm also a doctor, so this <laughs> is health advice as well. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, and guess what? Everything I tweet reflects my company's policies. That's right, yeah. Oh, how do you like <laughs> that? Instead of tweets are my own, it's like, no, this is the official opinion <laughs> of <for> TV. <laughs> uh, not just that, but the, the government of Korea and America. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. I love that. Like, tweet, tweets are my own. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Does this uphold in a court of law? Like, yeah. how does this work? Like, listen, you're just a coward for typing that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's our standings thus far. Trap up at the top, Rogue right behind. Plus two, plus one, minus one, minus two. But Ryung hasn't played yet, so yeah. now we can see where he goes. Whoa! What is, what is happening? This is looking schizophrenic here. Oh, we're just trying every Let's screen go everywhere. That we have. Let's see what all what what cameras are. I where. want to see the bracket from Super Tournament next. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, uh, guys, this is going to be a fun one. Look, Ryung looked amazing. I think he had like the yeah. best performance and the best games in the first. What was round of twenty? Yeah, I'm still yeah. used to saying round of twenty, round of ten. Um, what is this music? It's so not sort of like there were marching. horses trotting for a second. Yeah. Something like that. I thought it was soldiers marching, but okay. Uh, yeah, Ryung is the player I'm most excited about right now. Yeah. You know, he's really been popping off lately. Like, he, he looked great in Katowice. Here yeah. he's looking amazing as well. Uh, he had the sickest comeback ever against Zest. And I'm excited to see what he does here. And honestly, like, those games from that, that group, like, even against Maru, they were really good. Yeah. Real yeah. good games from him. So now we get to see his other matchup, Terran versus Zerg. This is going to be a fun one. Everybody's saying, by the way, that Ryung is, like, super sick. Like, he's so good right now. And it definitely looked like it there. But against Rogue, I mean, almost nobody ever beats Rogue. Like, yeah. if, if you were a betting person, and you wanted to be as conservative as possible, you just always bet on Rogue. Yeah, it's a, he's, you know. yeah, definitely. He's good. Always going to be about 50% against everyone, I would say. Yeah, yeah, he's basically favored against all players. This is music that is mixed in with just people 
uh, reloading guns? What is this? Yeah, this is some sort of army music. Yeah, this is... It's a Call of Duty theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so funny. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Rogue. Oh, oh, where are they going? They're going to make two barrackses, and one is right, just kind of wedged in there. Mm. And I, I, this is some very right, forward watch. play. Does look he check this. the side? He does oh not. my god! But the Overlord, will it see? It's not going to see. Oh, it's oh, not going to see. No. Oh, tasteless. Oh no. Rogue! Rogue! Rogue, the calls are coming from inside the house! <laughs> yeah, they definitely are this time. Yeah. Well, this is peak StarCraft right here. Oh, for sure. This is, uh, we call this your worst game on your latter day. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, what? Oh, oh, all right. Screw this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, finishes the first one, starts the bunker. I yep. mean, this this hatchery is just gone. Well, we just get to see what Rogue wants to do as a recovery here. It's funny because Ryung and Maru hang out a lot, and obviously Maru and Rogue were teammates for years and years and years. Yeah, yeah. Which actually made Rogue, in my opinion, the best uh, anti-proxy two racks player in the world because Maru's by far the best yeah. the proxy player. Um, all right, let's look at oh, look at Rogue's face. Yeah, and I'm just the wondering if smile. Maru's like, oh, I got this one in my back pocket if you want it for Rogue. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to do this against him in our next finals, but here you go. So um, this that is hatchery's extremely gone. tough to recover from. It's one of the hardest things in the game is the Zerg that's lost the uh, natural expansion. Mm -hmm. It's trying to be functional. The links don't even get out. No. And he's making a couple of spines. I don't think you try to walk down and save this, right? I think no, you give I think it you up. It. He's gonna but get the queen out. If you time, give though. it up, like how do you ever win from here? That's well, well, we're gonna find out if there is a way to win from here. Yeah, it seems like impossible. Well, if he's gonna reclaim it, it's gotta be now. I'm worried that there's actually just not enough health on the hatchery to. He's gonna lose this and yeah. then. Let's see if he can win oh, this fight. It's a perfectly timed out thing, right? Like the Ridlings come out, t uh, tank a lot of damage, and he's trying to burrow these spines. Oh my god. And, you know, okay, he pushes he pushes the push back, and he can remake the hatch. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's as good as you can really well, do, right? This bunker is still here, so, oh, like, boy. you know, You're right he's now. halfway there. I feel like you, me, and Rogue all forgot about that bunker until <laughs> yeah. he went over there and filled it in. We're like, oh, wait a minute, this isn't over yet. Maybe you think that, you know, you're. Your opponent's going to sell that off or something. Anyways, he does get rid of it. And now, now he can finally get that hatchery down once again. Both the spines are in the ground. But obviously a good position for Rio. He's got to be feeling great right now. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, let, let's see where he wants to take the game from here, you know. Uh, I, I think there are still possibilities for Rogue to try to take this game uh, because he did actually kill off the bunkers and everything over at the natural. I think had that not been killed, this would have just been, uh, well, we'd be in game two, basically. Mm -hmm. So Cloak on the way. Banshee will be started shortly here, no doubt. Third command center coming up. Always like that. It's pretty common. See very fast third CC, but he did go Banshee first, so that could be a little bit tricky here for Rogue. Some brainy play here out of Rion so far. And Dog uh, is watching him. Yeah, just getting the third uh, command center here. They're trying to just continue to, to, to get growth out here, and I guess using the Banshee to at least keep the Zerg honest. Mm -hmm. You know, generate somewhat of a threat. No surprises there. Uh, this is a Banshee with Cloak, by the way. This is kind of a cool yeah. little transition post yeah. uh, the rush. Yeah, and anything, if you're trying to cheese him or something, the Banshee will just shut it down. Yeah. Um, 
kind of funny seeing that barracks turn around to chase away the Overlord. It's like something you don't think about very often, right? Yeah. Like it turned around and went towards the Overlord, and the Overlord just got out of there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Flying stuff that can't do damage that chases each other away. So that Banshee's inbound now. And immediately cloaked, so I don't know if uh, Rogue is going to realize what's happening until the first Banshee shot's fired. And I don't see any detection here. Yeah, that's that's a bit rough. Start some spores, but there's going to be a lot of dead drones from this. Ryung's whole strategy here is just tearing Rogue apart. Yeah, every step uh, of the way here, we're basically seeing Rogue get wrecked. I mean, I, he, I think he's going to get every single drone. No, I guess not. Ran out of energy, but you get what I'm saying. Like, he, he killed so many workers there, and he's not even done yet. Now there's Hellions up here as well. Yeah, he's going to get rid of a bunch of the links here. He might have to remake some of those. Comes another Banshee. Thinks twice against that Spore. All right, layer on the way. Yeah, layer it is. Um, again, I mean, Rogue is very good at weathering the storm and coming back, but this has been an S-class game from Ryung so far. I mean, he's really played amazingly. He has, and I mean, you know, he, he got away with that two racks in his opponent's natural you gotta opener. You got to check for stuff like that, man. Uh, it's tough. It's tough to check every single location. But you know, when you get something like that, sometimes everything's going to look brilliant right thereafter. But I would say the, the Cloak Banshee play was an interesting little turn, right? A lot of yeah. times people go faster third CC. We don't normally see very quick Cloaked Banshee as a follow up, but it worked out fantastically. I mean, Rogue is one of these players that's played so many tournament games, you really can figure out what his responses are most likely to be. Yeah. And from here, the third base is going to get populated with more SCVs, and we're eventually going to have Ryung come out on the map and try to take some pushes. But first, this double drop comes up. Not sure how effective this is going to be. I think there's too many queens, and mm -hmm. you can see Rogue is being extremely cautious with how he's approaching this, you know? What, what do you think about the uh, Roche upgrades here? This, it, I think this is a pretty desperate play here yeah. from Rogue to go into 1-1 one, one Roche. Yeah, he's basically going to try to have a surprise timing. He's, he basically wants to take a fight. Like around the same time the Terran might feel confident about coming out. Mm -hmm. He wants to meet that with a bunch of Roaches and try to, you know, basically thrash his army apart. With how bad but, his opener was, though. Is that going to work? Well, it's going to be a surprise, I think. I mean, I certainly didn't expect him to tech into this. And, you know, maybe the surprise is going to work, but honestly, um, this doesn't feel that good, right? No. This doesn't feel like it's going to pan out that well. But I think what Rogue's doing is, you know, he's realizing he's in a really bad position, and, you know, he needs to kind of do something weird and unusual to try to get control of this game again. Because Ryung is, like, basically never overextended in any way. He's just taking jabs here and there and getting further ahead. Even this little attack right here illustrates this pretty well. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a problem for uh, for Rogue in the long run. So Rogue trying to come out here with something a bit more surprising. And I mm -hmm. think we are at the point in time in the game where the Terran's going to be actually active. And we know that yeah. because uh, there's tanks coming out, which means he wants to commit to a position and try to shell one of the Zerg's bases. Mm -hmm. Eight Ravagers being made. 1-1 one, one is about to finish for him, so he'll be even on those upgrades. Yep. Here comes Ryung's push over towards his fourth base location. Now let's see if Rogue can actually hold on. He throws down the Biles, but just makes the Marines move a little bit. The Siege Tanks just shelling this high ground. Oh my god, Ryung is destroying this. Yeah, this is not going to work. GG, Ryung takes out Rogue in a day full of surprises. Yeah, yeah. The I, I think the Roach Ravager was... A strange play, uh, but you know, I, he was so far behind, it's fine. You gotta take some sort of risk. Uh, Ryung though, looking very on top of his game. Dude, I tell you what, if you had asked me a year ago, if you were like, what do you think? Do you think Ryung will ever come back? I'd be I like, well, no. if he does, you'd probably barely make it to Code S. Whereas I'm the Terran I'm looking at right now, this guy can top six this tournament. This is what the perfect Terran player looks like. It may be hard to accept. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, he's playing so well. Honestly, like, it's it's exciting. 
You know, you get some of these guys, they've been in GSL <laughs> forever. But it may be hard to accept. <laughs> hmm, you may find this implausible, but hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he did get the jump on Rogue, though. I mean, let's not forget, really, the start of that, you know, is, is how we... That's a macro opener, Tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's yeah, the it, future, man. You don't make buildings in your own base. It's the past as well. Time's a flat circle. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go into Blackburn, a very different map here. Right, and let's see what Ryung's got uh, in store for us. Is right now, he's got a 1-0 lead versus Rogue. GSL season one. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Rogue. <laughs> Team GP, Dion. I still can't get over the face that I see on the mini map every time I look at this. I see Aslan the lion yeah. <laughs> on the mini map, and I can't unsee it. Honestly, if you had, like, one of the mustaches that curled up, this would be your face. <laughs> Tasteless, if you had an evil carnival mustache, this yeah. would be you. It absolutely yeah. would be. You'd be. You'd look great with an evil <laughs> carnival mustache. Yeah. Some more young support here in the audience. I liked mustache artosis. Yeah. I want you to bring it back. You oh, said your yeah. wife didn't like the mustache, no, though, she right? she really doesn't. Yeah. Truly, truly does not. Was it not. too alpha? It was, like, too threatening? Yeah, man. You look <laughs> like sure. you could do woodwork and stuff. <laughs> like, there, there were all these skills I suddenly... <laughs> yeah. Like, if I can ever make a bookcase, yeah. that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should do the mustache at some point in time. Well, you have a mustache. Well, I mean, shave the beard off, keep the mustache. I would love to, to see you without a beard again. I see all these old pictures of you with no facial hair. My yeah. God, were you hot. Well, thank you, Artosis, but my head is fatter now. That's the problem. This <laughs> yeah, is what, I can this see is what that. bearded guys of my body weight now do is we... You get that beard up there. We, kind of, we get the beard and we kind of trim it down at the bottom to get yeah. more of our square shape in our head back. It looks good. I mean, you look good. I haven't taken the beard off in a long I don't know what's under there, Artosis. I don't know either. I don't know what's down there. It may be too much to handle. I can imagine it's like a Freddy Krueger nightmare. <laughs> like, <laughs> we shave it and there's just maggots. I'm like, whoa, no! Tasteless! What happened to you? Like, I don't know! Oh, I'm crying is so You're funny. like the Hellraiser guy, yeah. there's just pins coming out of you. <laughs> oh, Tasteless! On oh, more man or something. <laughs> oh. so funny, man. <laughs> I'm like, I have tears in my eyes. I'm laughing so hard. Well, let's see if Ryung could play a uh, as strong of a game without getting an advantage right away like he did in that last game. Dude, I'm, I'm really hoping he actually shows us his older style. Like, Ryung used to very much like Banshees, even Speed Banshees into Mech. And that this map, I actually kind of like Mech on. We don't see it, like, actually normally beat Rogue, but... We don't see many things normally beat Rogue, so I guess we'll just see what, what Ryung has planned. Seems like he's done some great planning as well, with that first game at least. Got a Ling combing the top here. Ooh, look at that Roach Warrant. Look at the speed of that. Yeah, Ryung is uh, going to come out swinging pretty quick. Uh, it's right up at the front of the base, though, but these queens are positioned far out enough. I don't know if it's going to be as easy to scout. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really just run in there. And I mean, he's only, you know, making uh, reactor marines along with his, his Hellions, so. Medivac is on the way. I guess the one thing working for Young is he didn't get a very fast third CC or anything, which normally if Zerg is rushing, you're getting that fast third CC. It makes it a lot harder. At least he's making units. All right, Medivac with marines going across the map. A couple of racks is on the way, so no mech or anything like that is follow up. Much heavier in units, though. Still yeah. no third CC. And I like this play here from Ryong. Yes. Just come take whatever free kills you can get uh, and try to control the pace of the game that way. I, I like that. Be I like how you say that, too, because 
a lot of times you'll see them like they'll see the overlord they're like no i have to go get drones it's they like it's rogue them. do you think you're gonna go get drones is that what you think you're yeah, gonna do yeah yeah this is a guaranteed kill that you're gonna get yeah take take what you can get and it's an important position for that you know where that overlord's at yeah. that's that overlord is a spotter for everything else on the map totally, totally. okay that was crazy when he dropped that there like I think that was a pre-drop you had that set up. Because you would never look at yeah, that yeah. and be like, I need to do this like, right You know now. what I need to do is drop one Marine because that'll exactly be one shot by this many roaches. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. It's like... <laughs> uh, if you're supply blocked, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you need to start a Banshee or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> Quickest way to kill something. Yeah. I've had that happen in my games where I'm like, all right, one of these uh, probes is going to have to be killed. Oh, absolutely. I forgot a pylon. <laughs> So the roaches have backed off, and uh, it's actually a lot of drones being made, so we really didn't do that much with the roach warren. Oh. It's your turn, Artos, as you go. <laughs> well, I'm watching a medevac fly through a slow zone towards yeah. a base that has lings patrolling, so I don't have anything to say. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, Tasteless. That's but, okay. Oh, look at that. The lings that are patrolling come up here. He yeah. micros fancy and then boosts out. So, so far, that was my favorite part of this game right there. <laughs> uh, Stim 10 seconds out from finishing. Uh, and we're getting Marines six at a time. Tanks are coming. And with the, uh, you know, attack upgrade, combat shield, Stim, everything else finishing up, I think we're due for a push pretty soon here from Ryan. Yeah, you might be right about that. Like, I mean, but I feel like we never see Rogue die in these kind of positions. Like, can you, in, in all the games we've casted of Rogue, we've done a lot. I mean, how many games have we actually ever seen Rogue just, like, die to a push early on? Well, the people that push him like this normally are, like, a fair amount worse than him. Players like Keen, yeah. Dream. Uh, those are some of the people I'm I'm kind of remembering doing more of these mid-game, trying to figure something out pushes. Mm -hmm. Let's see let's see what Ryan can get done. Because it's, again, Ro Travager. Hmm. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, well, boys. That's, well, I don't. Those as CVs turn around out. is like the worst fake yeah, I've ever he's he's like, like, oh. No, they aren't really going out yeah, there. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, with the SCVs coming, I don't know. We never, ever, ever see pushes like this. Okay, I mean, this is kind of a crazy maneuver here. Is it going to be enough to smother Rogue? Oh this gosh. is a lot of SCVs. The army's starting to get fractured here. Yeah, he is really going for pro. The Siege Shank's well spread, and he's actually being so aggressive with everything else that the Vials can't connect. So yeah. the Siege Shanks remain alive, which is very, very, very important. It looks like he's going to leapfrog one up. Uh, Another he does one coming supply out. block him. Oh. Killing those two Overlords is actually huge. You're right. But Ryung's supply, very, very small. He has almost no workers. He's got to make this work. The workers come up now from Rogue. Vials start to come out onto these Siege Shanks. His Marine's still putting out a lot of damage, oh, but I think Ryung is going to hold this. I think Ryung's got this. That last tank hasn't been killed. It's finally picked off. Just one more to go. Yeah. Oh, my God. He actually holds, but 23 yeah. drones are killed. Keep in mind, though, 48 workers here for Rogue, uh, 25 for Ryung. That started with yeah, yeah. nearly all the workers sent across the map. I, I think the game's over now. Like, yeah. Rogue's, Rogue's got him. He I just... think we're going to see the sequel to the attack. Pull the boys too. Well, Rogue could even That's in my like favorite. one minute or so probably attack him back. <laughs> pull yeah. the boys too. Pull the boys too, man. Gosh. My favorite. My favorite buddy. Well, cop if it's movie. if it's even successful a little bit, we're gonna get like four pull the boys movies right in a row. So. That's right. Yeah. Got a milk. Pull the boys worth. 3D. Yeah. <laughs> and then pull the boys four that went straight to DVD. Pull the boys forever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Rogue just held it, right? Yeah, like, I mean, it was, it was a cool strategy, but Rogue... You never really yeah. see the boys get pulled in a situation like this, but, it, I mean, it was interesting. I, I like seeing, like, planned out, strong builds here. You know, he won map one with a good plan, and then map two, he's he's trying to do it again. It doesn't work out, but... Yeah, that's life. That's life. Yeah. It's an important lesson you can take from that, Artosa. Yeah. You win some, you lose some, you know what I mean? Yeah. Potato, potato, am I right? Like, yeah. <laughs> now, um... No sense crying over spilt milk. This is... This is a rough one, man. I don't think that there's going to be any headway. The creep spread's insane, by the way. Yeah. Look at the creep spread at the top. I'm... 
Okay, I guess. Where are the boys? This is. Where like, are they? Does he even have enough boys to pull? He only has 25 boys. Yeah. It's like not even enough for an overcrowded school classroom. Uh. Yeah. I mean, he's just super, super wrecked here. Yeah. There's no way to micro against this. No, it doesn't no matter how good you are. It's yeah. like. Yeah, GG, Rogue wins game two, tying this up one to one. Uh, and as a quick reminder, guys, you know, because we kind of talked about this at the start of the show, but a lot of people, you know, they skip the start and they go right into the games. It is a long show. Um, this is the round of 10. Yeah. And this is day one of group A in what will be a two day process for this group. Yes. So if you're watching this and, you know, this is our third best of three, this is not a normal GSL group. This is the new format we have in GSL to try to spice things up in the middle of the tournament. Yeah. So this is not like a moment where whoever wins this goes on That's to right. the next match. That's right. Um, Uh-oh, we're going on camera. Got to put my jacket back on. Got to put my clothes back on. I cast best when I'm naked, but they don't let me do that on here. <laughs> That's only Especially for the doses. audience, man. Yeah. Uh, be looking up, seeing things they never wanted yeah. in GSL. Um, I don't know why we're stopping, but some kind of delay here. I think Rogue is going to the bathroom. He's got to go scream into a pillow that right now <laughs> he's like, at, it looks like right now he's probably not going to win the group. It's possible that he does, but he's dropping maps here against players that I don't think he had any plan to drop in maps to. Ryung does not want to play a normal game so far. He had proxy barracks, and then this... Um, Almost seemed like an old way to play the game, but he did, you know, two base, pulling the boys. Yeah, no, it was weird. It was it was definitely very different. Um, um, I, I liked, actually, some of the micro moves he put in there where he pushed so far forward. Like, he's taking extra damage on, and this is, I'm sure, why the SCVs came as well, but extra damage on those Marines. Yeah. And that zones back everything so Biles can't hit the tanks because he needs the steady damage of the tanks over time to be able to break that. But it just, it wasn't enough. Like, Rogue just macroed up. It was pretty clear after he didn't die instantly that he was going to be able to break it. Like, you you know, when you first hit, you need to have it almost win right there with something like that. And yeah. I thought he was going to take it for a second. I mean, especially when he had the, the uh, Ravagers zoned back and the tanks were just continuing to shell. But uh, I think when, when Rogue walked out of tank range, that yeah. was, like, kind of the moment where it's like, well, these hurt Marines, these these eight hurt Marines can't do anymore. Like, yeah. if they keep yeah. fighting alone, they're dead. And then the amount of time it takes to get your tanks up, and you can't just push them all forward really quickly, or the biles start to connect, the roaches are going to get picks. Uh, if you have multiple tanks on siege, suddenly Rogue can just attack in. Right. You know, it's a very tough position there, and there's a lot of vision for Rogue. It's not like he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so going into game three, I mean, are we going to have – a macro game, and you know, I talked about this a little bit with the Ragnarok game, but I think it's applicable here as well. Is like sometimes you see people play like this, and look, a win is a win, okay? But it might indicate that they do not feel confidence in a long macro game against this player. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that that would be yeah. intelligent. Like, I, actually, I think everybody's had this experience. Like you, you queue with somebody who's way higher MMR, and you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna all in. Yeah. How like, many? I don't wanna... How many people can actually beat <clears throat> Rogue? In straight up macro games, it's like it's hard to think of those games. Maybe a couple like, years back, Zergs, and I'm sure you know, even Maru can't really do it. Like, yeah. it's just he's like maybe Sarah and Rainer about it. Like, he just he, he'll gobble you up if you just let him get into the late game normally, right? So, all right, well, we're just gonna go to Hardwire here for map three. Does Rung, Rung, does Ryung have any surprises uh, for us? We're going to find out. Rung. Rung versus Zone. Rung <laughs> The greatest TVP ever. Oh, oh, oh. Are we rebels for life, Artosis? <laughs> well, we're approaching our 40s and still yeah. casting StarCraft yeah. tasteless. So but in suits. <laughs> that's true. Well, to be fair, I have shorts on underneath this. That's true. It is shorts weather, by the way. Oh, it's hot today. I'm still in that moment where I haven't truly appreciated the seasonal change, so I'm like putting on the jacket that I was wearing for weeks past that now is basically... I came to work in a t-shirt and shorts, man. That's cool, man. Sunglasses. I have sunscreen on my nose I'm right gonna now. I'm going to come in here with swim trunks on next time yeah, and not totally. say anything, you know. Absolutely. I'm going to oh. wear my swimming goggles on the cast and yeah. tell them I need them for eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh oh. Yeah, and he turns You've around. You've been seeing it. spotted, and the Overlord has longer vision range than the SCV in the barracks, so he knows what's coming, mm -hmm. and he's sending drones out here to punish it. A third barracks. Oh, do you pull that SCV from the third barracks? I think you do. I think you pull it up to health. This is where you hope that fortune he is. He has on another your SCV coming. Was he going four racks? Uh, no, I think this is just because he sees that he's been scouted. Well, no, this was already on the, its way before oh, that got it? there. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Well, this doesn't look very good, does it? This that, isn't very promising for He needs to start a fourth <laughs> barracks further back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we actually saw that once from Maru. Do you remember? Like, his yeah, proxies got scouted, and then he did it again. <laughs> Guys, something tells me we're going to be going to a commercial pretty soon. Yeah, it's not looking It's not looking too good here for Ryung. Oh, my God. I feel like this is like one of these games where you suddenly wake up in a cold sweat and you're like, oh my God, it was just yeah, a nightmare. That didn't happen. Oh, thank that God didn't that happen. didn't happen. Thank God. Well, he's going to wake up like that tomorrow. As a spawning pool is finishing, it's like, can this get any worse? Dude, this is So what do you think? You think, you think Graham's got this artosis? You think he's... I got to tell you, Tasteless. I... Ah! I'm trying to imagine... Who Ryung could beat this? Your Zerg? Yeah. Maybe Tasteless. Maybe. <laughs> I'd even put my Zerg as a pretty okay against this. Yeah, to be I honest, think you'd you know? I think you'd look at this and you'd be like, I think I can just make some units yeah. here. <laughs> I think what I need to do is make Lings. Am I right? Did I yeah. do it? And he's gonna expand. SCV's coming home humiliated. It's a it's a it's a tough one. All right, the lings are coming up. There's no wall. The CC being made. That's interesting. Goes right for the CC, not the SCV initially. Now, yes. keep in mind that the Marines are coming back, but I mean, the rally path is in the way of, for the lings is, is in the way of the rally path for the Marines. So it's like, this is really awkward. Mm -hmm. This is about as catastrophic of, of a failure as you can have in an early game. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's it's getting worse and worse and worse right now. Like I, I don't even know what you would start thinking about to try to figure out a comeback. Like your highest percentage chance of coming back might literally just be making Marines. Well, I think yeah, I think you're yeah. sorry, GG. Yeah, your highest chance of coming back is fighting Rogue again in the next tournament. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, okay, so that I mean, Ryan just got completely destroyed there, and you see him throw his earbuds. Hey, you know what? He, he cheesed him three times. He got a map win, which is pretty decent against the strongest player in the tournament. Uh, and there, Rogue, Rogue now a couple two ones under his belt. But yeah, you know, it's it's harder than I think he expected tonight. Yeah, and you know, that's a, a rough one there for Ryung. Kind of reflecting on that loss and not happy about it, but what a kind of funny way that went down too, right? It's like all these drones coming out, then more SCVs, and yeah, definitely well, a one of a kind game. All right, right. guys. Well, yeah, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, trap against Ragnarok.
힘들어도 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 핫식 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 핫식 아침은 라떼 홀리 점심은 라떼 홀리 저녁은 라떼 홀리 풍부하게 달콤하게 라떼 홀리 달달한 충전이 필요할 땐 칸타타 라떼 홀리 힘들어도 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 핫식 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 핫식 아침은 라떼, 홀리 점심은 라떼 홀리 저녁은 라떼 홀리 풍부하게 달콤하게 라떼 홀리 달달한 충전이 필요할 땐 홀리 칸타타 라떼 홀리 Today's matchup Rogue Shrugna Rogue Trap Beyond Beyond Most competitive, one versus one game. Africa TV, Freak Up Studio Live. 2022 GSL Season 1, Code S. Welcome back, everybody. It's time to go into the fourth uh, best of three for the evening here in Group A in the round of 10. Here's our standings thus far. Rogue and Trap in the lead, but Trap's only played one match, so he's actually doing better. But we're going to see if he continues to do better as he goes up against Ragnarok Max. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one uh, to see here. I mean, Trap looked extremely strong. Ragnarok's really performing better than I think a lot of people expected, though. He is. He is. I'm, I'm excited about him this season. In fact, this group, I mean, Ryung and Ragnarok are kind of the two guys that I'm watching to see how they perform. It would be really interesting if one of these guys gets out of the group. I think there's a decent chance, too. Yeah. Like, Bion is not in his best form right now, so... It is possible. Of course, yeah. Ragnarok going to be really looking to at least take a map off of Trap here. You know, you can kind of look at Trap and Rogue as the two strongest in the group. It's pretty clear. Yeah. Although they're having to put some work in today. Yeah. You know, it's not been, I think, as smooth as we expected and as smooth as they would have liked, to be totally honest here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what's Ragnarok gonna do? Um, you know, we talked a lot earlier on about how he was kind of, uh, I don't know, he was proxy hatching a lot. He was kind of yeah. being a sneaky snake. A little bit. And you know, the question always, whenever you see somebody cheesing a lot, is like, okay, is that all you have though? Yeah. Because you can't cheese every game. Can't cheese um, every game now, that's but, for sure. But you know, he looked pretty strong today. I think he had an impressive uh, performance. I think especially against Rogue, even though he didn't pull it off in the end. I mean, clearly the ability is there. But Trap's another very tough opponent to go up against. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be tough for Ragnarok, especially if he gets aggressive, because Trap is great on the defense. Right, right. All right, guys, we're ready to hop into this game. We're going to start off Burly Grad for this best of three, Trap versus Ragnarok. GSL Season 1. Don't freak. Trap. <laughs> Alpha X. Ragna Rogue. Okay, pull immediately. Yeah, yeah. So pull first. And this is against a uh, hatchery block. Ragnarok sends out the drone. He 
it has not the money for a hatchery. What's going on? So he's trying to hide the fact that this pool is coming extremely quickly, but th this probe, if it gets in there, is going to scout this, and the drone is intended to nibble away at the minerals and basically give it quicker access uh, over here. Yeah, he actually pulls it back, though, so he yeah. actually did a little double fakie there, gets his natural hatchery up, trap looks like he's scouting for proxy hatch which is kind of funny all right comes back sees that he has been duped slightly so it looks like this started out with something that you know he wanted to be pretty aggressive and then realized this isn't going to work <laughs> oh i love that a shy guy so fun having audience members here again Sato animal crossing memes i don't know what is going on tasteless some messages for jyp here in the audience as well I'm actually not used to this again, like having audience members. Like yeah. when they cut, I'm like, what? what's going on? I'm like, oh, that's right. There's people here. Yeah, when I went down to go to the bathroom on the commercial break, I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Trap's record against Ragnarok is not as good as you would imagine. Yeah, I thought 10, it would be much more lopsided. 40, 40. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty close. So, yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, uh, Ragnarok's dialed it back a lot. He's going into macro play here. The probe actually does make it out. Looks like the Ling's waiting over here will get him, though. Jumping right out of the bush, getting the kill. That's the scariest. Yeah, man, the jump scare for that probe, no doubt. Worse than that, even. He just dies straight up. Jump death. Second gate in the main. All right, there you go, and third gate at the wall. So he did like a full wall with the gate there for a moment. I think he maybe thought that the links were gonna try to run in. Yeah, so third base is coming down here. It's a quiet start between these two. It Although seems it's like it's just gonna be some adept pressure. Like, yeah. some somewhat vanilla adept pressure. He's getting the twilight, yeah. so. The question is gonna be, you know, how much adept pressure, you know? If you're getting because Twilight, you have to go Glaives, right? It would seem like it, yeah. But, you know, I mean, does that mean he's going to have seven more gates or something like that and try to come in here with a lot of pressure? Or is it really more about, like, you know, kind of having I, a little bit of that element there, but you're trying to expand behind this? I think it's three gate, pretty steady production. Because if you're going to grab your gates that quickly, otherwise, if you're going to do, like, it much more heavily, I think it's likely that you go Twilight and then like add a bunch of gates, but here he went like three gates into Twilight. So I think here he's just gonna make a depths off the three gates for a little bit and then send them out. So these adepts are gonna come in here and they're gonna get a nice confirm on what's going on. Lovely block! Yes. That's so sick. Um and he's going to send these drones back. Actually drops a second one. But not exactly flawless here. And a third. Uh, and a fourth will be the last that he'll be getting out of this. Not too uh, bad. Yeah, I mean, you basically paid, the adepts paid for themselves for the most part. And double Stargate behind it. So he's kind of been scouted what he's doing, right? The Twilight has been seen. The three gates have been seen. He saw two adepts on the map and then more being made. So against this, you'll, like, always get a Roach Warren. Right. So trap. Going into double Stargate, very likely we're going to see Phoenixes out of this. You could, I mean, I don't think you'd ever go double Stargate Void Ray on two base. That would be, like, very weird. But let's see. Okay, yeah, it is Phoenix. So Phoenix is coming out in pairs here uh, as we're getting a setup to take the third base. This is a very interesting way that Trap's approaching this, at least to start things off. Yeah, there's definitely some mind games. He's kind of leading... Uh, you know, Ragnarok into what he wants him to do, right? Right. Like, you, if they're making roaches kind of, like, in a defensive stance and you go into to Phoenixes, you're going to be feeling pretty good. That's a lot oh, of lings, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a really good surround on that. And, you know, usually when you have the pylon set up over there like that, the idea is that the lings are not going to get a good surface area, you know, on those adepts. But when yeah. he caught them like that, I mean, this is huge right now. Oh, man. And he forces the cancel on the Nexus. He's going to end up killing some of the adapts. I mean, big victory there for Ragnarok to start things off. I like it. I like it. 
And I think you're looking at this right now as Ragnarok and wondering what exactly is going on because he never brought out the Adepts and now the Ling should be seeing these Phoenixes, I guess. Maybe. I don't know, it just got out in front of him. Oh no, Spores get started. Okay, so I think he did just barely catch a glimpse of that. But I don't think that'll be super surprising based on the actions that we've seen from Trap. Right, you don't go three start three uh, gate of death and like do nothing with them. Right. So the Phoenixes are trying to find some damage over here. Looks like they won't even end up getting that Overlord as the oh. Queens are just going to zone them out with ease. Uh, Bailing's Nest on the way, and the Robo starting here for Trap. Um, you know, getting the Forge here as well, so he's going to be investing in a longer game. Oh my god! Two Phoenixes dropped. I mean, this. Not a very good it's, pilot. It's not a very good pilot. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that this many things have gone this poorly this quickly in our first game. Yeah, yeah. There, it, this is not the most solid game from Trap. To be fair, this is not his style very much. Right? Like, he doesn't normally play like this. If you cover this up and ask me who it was, I would tell you that Zest was on heavy medication. <laughs> <laughs> this is Zest right. on drugs. It's a Zest-ish build, but not done as well as Zest does it. Right. A lot more links right. coming here. I think he Ragnarok. had his wisdom teeth removed today. That's what. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what we're looking this at here. This is Zest with his wisdom teeth removed. <laughs> yeah. yeah th today. Yeah. Not yesterday, because yeah. if it was yesterday, he'd be doing it better yeah. than this. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Again, Phoenix is not able to find that much value here. No way with Phoenix is to deny that extra base. Adepts, he's got to can't cancel imagine that, that he's going to commit with this. Yeah, yeah so he, he cancels that, that shading. Uh, Bailing Nest is going for speed. He's getting plus one melee, going into Hydra. We're actually going to see Hydra Ling Bane, it looks like. Okay, okay. Uh, Wow, we haven't really, the last time we saw Hydraling Bane in GSL was Dark versus Trap in GSL Finals, and Trap had completely forgotten how to play against it. So we're going to see if he has remembered since then how to play against it. Uh, he's really got to, like, retain his High Templars and Archons and things like that. We'll see how quickly this attack actually comes in. you got to wait for speed, you got to wait for your Hydra upgrades. Yeah. You have to but get look, in the side storm here if, as well. If Ragnarok's going to win a game in the series, it should be this one. I yeah, mean, he yeah. is really, everything has been working out amazingly for him here. I oh. mean, I think Trap is a pretty sturdy player, so, you know, he can fumble and still kind of make it work anyways. But, I mean, it's looking tough, man. I'm going to be honest with you, Tasis. I don't like this move out from Trap. Even yeah, a little bit. this scares me a little bit. I, I wasn't expecting an attack this soon either. I thought we had a lot more time in this game. I guess he wants it to line up with plus one attack, but, like, I would have to imagine that... Yeah, maybe that he gets in just in the nick of time here. Let's see. We don't have Banes yet. Oh, no, we do have a few right there. Okay. Yeah, you had those on defense, actually, already before. So, yeah, this is not the ideal time. Ooh, he does a recall, and he tries to get in with his remaining Adepts. I like the idea of trying to utilize the Adepts here. We've got, like, a little bit of damage with that. But now it's just Ling Hydra production right now for Ragnarok. And Ragnarok is up on 70 workers. That's enough to, like, produce this non-stop. Yeah, this is kind of scary. Mm. I mean, the 27 veins. I think we're going to see this game end pretty quickly. Yeah, the Nothing Phoenixes. outputs damage like Hydra Bane, dude. Yeah, yeah. If the Phoenixes are going to do nothing here. He, like, they are They are going to be Garbo. But he needs Psy Storm. He, need, he doesn't have it yet, right? Like, okay, he does the overcharge, which is good. Uh, the oh, force fields boy. are kind of meh. Yeah. Uh, going to connect on a lot of those adepts. Now, you know what's funny? I thought that was going to go a lot better. I, I think there's still a chance that Zerk just takes it, but... Well, it was it was like... It was Ragnarok disjointed. really tried to force the issue. And I... Yeah. Like, even though Trap held on, he has no High Templars. Right. right. So, what does he do during the next attack? Like, the way to actually stop Hydra Ling Bane is to continually create High Templars and retain them. And eventually you just have like some Archons and a lot of Psy Storm and they just die attacking into you. They'll just like run out. But here, it's like, okay, yeah, you have these Archons, but Hydras can actually kill Archons. It's not that big an issue. He really needs some Storms. He has High Templars sitting back, waiting. 
More stag D being made. So the main thing's coming right up. Oh my god. And look at this, he's hunting the High Templars. He yeah, knows exactly what to do. all the way back there. It's so funny. They're like trying to shuffle around the uh, assimilator. It's not going to work. There's so many Hydras out here. Storm does push some of them back. Oh my god, great detonation on those yeah. workers. And you know, he's, he's got like some units here, but they will all die. This, These units that we see from Trap don't beat Hydra Lang even. No, no, no. And the Lings are going to keep coming out here. Tries to come out here and chase it, and now the Lynx can get a body block over here. Mm -hmm. That's so well done there. Great Good start. juggling by Trap, though. Yeah, he's, uh, he's doing his best to hold on. Oh, he gets the overcharge. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Uh, no Archon left, though? Uh, well, he's running out of uh, surface area to try to micro this bag. Yeah. I mean, two Immortals, you never want to count them out. I mean, <laughs> the maxed out Zerg Army is still a game of chance, really. But <laughs> yeah, I don't sure. think that this is going to be one where uh, Oh, trap's dead. Yeah, trap's dead. Super duper duper dead. GG, Ragnarok. I'm starting to think we need to really kind of reevaluate where this guy's at. Well, Trap did an opening that's not really that great for him. I like. I, like, he can do some adept openings, but like into Double Stargate Phoenix. Yeah. I'm not so sure. I really like some of his openers where he might put on like some adept pressure into like. Blink Stalker plus Colossus, that type of play, right? right? Where he keeps the pressure on nonstop and expands. But going into those Phoenixes, the Phoenixes fell very flat, and so did the Adepts. He really yeah. didn't get much done with either. And Ragnarok's choice actually going to Ling Bane Hydra was a very good one. Yeah. And he just smashed me, knew what to do. Like you saw, he like took all the Banelings and right clicked them on three High Templars, because that's all you have to do. If they, yeah, don't, yeah. if they don't have High Templars, they're never going to stop you. Yeah, it was a great play. Um, I mean, look, uh, uh, Trap, I, I, he had a very disastrous performance to start things off. Let's see if he can have a better uh, run this time around, because right now Ragnarok is up with a 1-0 lead. Guangdong Freaks, Trap. Alpha X, Ragnar Rogue. Old rags. <laughs> old, old rags. Old rags, or old buddy. Is he going to win? Is it going to be from rags to riches here? To find a GSL <laughs> champion, Artosis. Eh, well, Trippy stands in his way, man. Yeah. I don't get it. What is Trippy? Oh, Trip Trap. Yeah. You know, Star Fox's old friend, That's Trippy. Right. Yeah. Trippy. It's a great pilot, unlike Trap. Yeah. If that was Trippy in the Phoenix, as he would have gotten that Overlord. <laughs> Whoop. Starcraft 2. Fighting. Okay, guys, our first day in a long time of having audiences down here. Yeah. So, um, and hopefully it's going to be the last time we don't have audiences. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be nice to just have. Yeah, it would be nice to people just people coming down and always have people in the studio from now on. Yeah. Be good. Well, you know, again, Trap had a, kind of an obtuse, an obtuse opening. We're going to talk today. Uh, went for adepts with glaives, but not a whole lot of them, and then went for phoenixes, but. Lost both the Adepts and the Phoenixes, at least some of the Phoenixes, early on and kind of didn't have a comfortable position later on. I mean, Ragnarok played well, but I do feel like a lot of the early game for from Trap was riddled with mistakes. It wasn't and GSL it was, Codex quality play. Yeah, and it was kind of a, it's a straightforward win. I mean, we've all had these games where like our opponent is clearly making egregious errors, and you don't really have to do that much. You know, things kind of backfire on their side. That was definitely one of those moments. For sure it was. This is a quick Baneling Nest. I am interested. Yeah. I would like to learn more about what he will do with this Baneling Nest. I think he wants those Banelings to explode. Mm -hmm. Where, though? Maybe he wants to crack open the entrance. And you do think he's just going to punch through the wall super quick? Well, Protoss doesn't have a door, Artosis. 
it's a problem. It's We've a been problem. talking about this problem for a long time. Humans have door technology, but it does not seem that the Protoss race does. Well, they have not invented hinges on IR yet. Well, they don't even have wheels either. There's not a single Protoss unit with no. a wheel on it. No, I Except mean, the Cybernetics Corps. They have advanced But they never thought to use Cybernetics legs. cars to bring them along, man. Yeah, all they need to do is take that top part of the core that spins when you upgrade and just start putting that at the bottom of their units. There you go, they got wheels. One of the early Protoss scientists saw his spiders, and he's like, that's the way. Yes. That's the way we should all be getting around, his that's bunch right. of legs. Look, he's got He a, saw Wild Wild West and was like, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. He's, he's got the probe waiting here for a wall. Here comes yeah, the Yeah, but it depends on if the screen is, uh, yeah, he's in the. What? Well. Well. Uh, well. There's Gaiman, and then there's Gaiman, guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love it. All right, Ragnarok. He's using a diamond ladder build to take I down know, Trap. Yeah. Meanwhile, in placement matches on Battle.net. Yeah. Okay, oh, look well. at Trap. He's like, man, come on. Yeah. Well, this is a sad way to uh, to lose. Now, Trap's not out of the tournament or anything. No, no. Remember, guys, oh, he's, uh, he's, he's just somewhere the in the middle of the pack the now. Bay. Yeah. But... So this is a big moment, though, for Ragnarok. Ragnarok getting a 2-0 here and going 1-2 against Rogue. GG. Ragnarok actually has already played the two hardest players in the group and yeah. has great results against them. More like based a rock. Based a rock. <laughs> yeah, dude. Whoa. More like, more like Ragnabase. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ragnabase. Yeah. Trap more like. Oh, I can see it. <laughs> um, impressive finisher there. I mean, you know. It's more like trapped in a base. <laughs> like two in right tasteless. More like trapped in your basement, is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Trapped in your base after he yeah, kills yeah. your wall. More like you wish you could be trapped in your base, but you're not because the Bane Legs got it. Yeah. Again. yeah. Uh, guys, it's gonna be break time. See? I can see the future. And I know that Byun and Ryung is coming up next, guys. We'll see it in a minute.
힘들어도 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 8 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 8 달달한 충전이 필요할 땐 칸타타 힘들어도 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 86 어려워도 이렇게 멈추면 내가 아니지 오늘이 뭐여? 새로운 날을 만든다 나의 레벨은 다르다 원하는 레벨 86 달달한 충전이 필요할 땐 칸타타 Today's matchup Rogue Ragnar Rogue Trap Bion Bion Most competitive One versus one game. Africa TV, Freak Up Studio Live. GSL Season 1, Code S. What's up, everybody? We're back, and we're ready to close the evening out here, getting to the halfway point of Group A. This is the round of 10. We've got a Terran versus Terran to finish up the evening. It's going to be Bion versus Ria. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I think Ryong is going to dominate here. Uh, he's always been very good at TBT, and he just looks like he's in better shape than Bion right now, for sure. Yeah, Ryong has really, I think, along with Creator, been the two most exciting players of the season, you know, with these very unexpected, incredible plays coming out of him. And even though we saw Ryong lose to Rogue earlier, I think the game's really exhibited uh, his skill back there. Bion, I mean, he's good. I'm worried he's not good enough to take on someone who looks so, so uh, strong and uh, very modern, like like Ryung is. Sure, yeah. Uh, and in fact, Ryung, you know, we saw him against Maru and he had a couple really good games against him and Maru is easily the best Terran. Yeah, Ryung coming into this. Does his hair look like really high up? Got like yeah. a half March it's Simpson like do, do going on right now. <laughs> There's a lot of volume in that hair. It's not a beehive, but it's like a hornet's nest. Yeah. He's got a very tall, tall hairdo, man. What's he hiding? He's up hiding there? a big brain, Artosis. Yeah, that's that's the rest some of his gamer brain. Gamer strats in that brain. He had the top part of his skull removed so he could have more brain yeah. like coming out of it. He had an extra brain and brain wrinkles put in there. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to start this best of three now. Let's do this. Ryung versus Beyond. Ooh. Ooh. Beyond going to open up with a proxy here. Look at him go. Does it bother you the SCV's feet don't move? They just kind of hover? Yeah, it's, it's weird like that they fly. Yeah. Oh, well, everybody's a bad person today. Artosis. Yeah, dude, just embarrassed this everywhere. Is, these guys deserve each other. They <laughs> really say. Do. Well, they're the both like this. Could be each other. Really interesting. Look at this. Offline, thirteen and thirteen. Online, Bion dominates him. Isn't that funny? That's like they be that close in live matches, yeah. and then it's like, oh, if I'm at home, I, you can't touch me. Bion is a killer in online stuff, man. Seriously. So, you know, this 
has to happen all the time, but I feel like we never get to cast this. Yeah, it's somewhat rare to, to see it. They're uh, both cheesing each other. Yeah, they're both going to go Reapers, I believe. Somebody is going to have to float their base. Or maybe they I both float. I think they float. both have to. Yeah, and it's... Yeah, this is it's going to be weird, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I like stuff like this. Every now and then you get a game where people trade mains. Yeah, and this is going to be one of them. This should be one of them. So these strategies are always engineered to go against somebody who's playing very normal, but I mean, when you have two players both doing this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this might be good for Byun. His micro, is. I would still you put a bug of Ryung's. Yeah, I yeah. think he's... Better micro and yeah, yeah. It just it, that kind of. I guess that's it. That's all I have to say. That was really cool, Artosis. Yeah, Thank you for no. sharing that with everybody. Yeah. Can I, I just I'm say I really this, appreciate yeah. that you kind of put yourself out there. I did. And Bjorn, I remember know, him being good at micro. It's not easy to be vulnerable like that, but you did it, and yeah. we all saw it, and that's cool. The Reaper's kind of his unit. Yeah. Now he's going to come in here. And immediately, they're, he's going to realize, oh, we're both doing this to each other. Mm -hmm. We're both cheesing each other. Now, how do you tax each other's multitasking here enough? Yeah. Right. A lot of SCVs coming out, so there's a lot of micro on both sides. Let's see if anyone loses a Reaper. I don't imagine yeah. it's going to be the case. Uh, and so, I mean, basically, both sides are not in their base right now, right? It's all about trying to micro this. And, look, and there's got to be, like, a right number of SCVs to pull and a right number to keep on them. You know what I mean? And we might find out what that is right now. Uh, and Bion is just starting to stack yeah. the damage over here. So, this now is keep so in mind, they both have orbitals. So even if all the SCVs are killed, you can still land mules. This, like, it's not too likely, but it could turn into a draw. So, it seems like one player mined a little bit more than the other, right? So can't Bion just go kill those Reapers? Ryung has more money. Uh, they're both out of gas. They're, yeah, there's still an SCV out there. That's actually a big advantage for uh, for Ryung, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. And five Reapers each. Yeah, I think I think Ryung is actually ahead here then, right? Uh, I think so. Six against six on Reapers. Gas is gone. Byun with 70 minerals, so he can only make one SCV. So oh. it, Byun should be the one that has to be more aggressive, right? Well, there's seven Reapers now. And there's going to be a Marine. Yeah, I mean... Oh, Byun spent all of his money. So Byun is actually going for a draw. Byun cannot win, right? Oh, wait, well, no, 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 I no, guess no. he I can mean, drop he, mules. He, he, he can land mules, and he can mine with that. This is oh, wild. This is a weird game, man. Yeah. All right. Ghostbusters. I know. I from was... that command center. I'm like, is that really the the command center? Is he that... wants to land there as well. Yeah. Okay, Ryung comes up. He has his Marines. He has an SCV. He has one less Reaper, but three more Marines and an SCV. What do you... This is... How do you even make the choices here? This is difficult. You know who I think is going to win this? SOS from retirement. Yeah. <laughs> He's already won this That's game watching game. from home. He's like, oh, I know what to do here. It's like, you're not even a Terran player. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Almost gets that Reaper in the front, yeah. the front clipped off. Yeah. Looks like we might oh. have trouble here for Beyond. I think this is... I think it's he's, over, man. He's zoning well, though. Like, you yeah. have enough grenades, and it's actually very hard to move in. Okay, he's landed the first mule. Keep in mind, you just need a mule to re return a few minerals, and you can make a, a little bit more yeah. infantry. Oh, Bion lost one. Ryung going for the kill here. Oh, good grenades. Good grenades here. Really good micro. Oh, he's starting to drop it. Okay, he's making some Marines. Gets the SCD. It's too much. And he's that's about to pop out another Marine here. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. It keep is. in mind, these Reapers are going to reach in here. He's going to land the barracks. Oh, my God. This Reaper's going to come over here and try to get these SCVs. But he can't really get kills. He just doesn't have enough damage output. Yeah, I think Ryung is just about one this. Yeah, But yeah. he's got to be careful, like a misstep here. In the well, they're both making Marines right now. So, yeah. like, Ryung just has two more units. He just does a dive on there. What? Okay, he ends up getting GG. All wow. right.
Crazy game, crazy game. Yeah, Ryung had a bit more money there. I feel like we need more games like that. That was really fun. That was weird. That you was can see weird. they both look like they just ate something sour. Yeah. Well, it was a very unusual moment. I mean, when you realize you're both cheesing each other. So, uh, Ryung takes that game. It wasn't the game that we expected, but we'll take it. I'll, I'll take multiple games like that. I yeah, want to yeah. see it with Marauders next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Game two. Beyond in a little bit of hot water here. Is anybody going to cheese this time around? Yeah, if Byun loses here, he is pretty far down the standings. 0202. Yeah. Not a good start. We'll have to really wreck next week. Yeah, and remember, guys, this is not the losers match. We're in a yeah. new format for the round of 10. Nobody gets eliminated yet. Uh, but regardless, Ryung right now with a 1 to 0 lead. No spoilers! Yes! <laughs> All right, so Bian once again going for, oh, double proxy racks once again. Okay. All right. Imagine if they both did it again in the yeah. exact same game. It's like happened. just two broken AIs. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> I kind of like this choice from Bian. Because there's no way Ryung would do this again, right? Yeah, I'm surprised that Beyond's doing it anyways, but I I, I think he just like wanted it. to do this and then, you know, he got caught with Ryung doing it as well. And now he's just gonna do it again. Because you know what? He knows he can win with this against a normal build. Yeah, he just needs his opponent to try to play straight up and he can steal the win. Maybe he does this this game and next game. Okay, and our beautiful fans in the studio. GSL fans I should say. That guy might not have any idea who we are, but <laughs> He's in the right place regardless. Yes. <laughs> Good save, Tasteless. <laughs> Good recovery, man. At first, I thought you were so full of yourself, but then you clarified, and I was like, you know what? He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, busted. Yeah, that's that's no fun. You thought you could game. You know. You can't. The place he put it, was, did it's he need like, to put it right there? No, or? it's way too hmm. close to him. But I think you don't norm. Do you normally see a depot right there? Uh, well, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. I feel I like guess. you do. Yeah, yeah, that's where the Reapers can jump up. So yeah, you put a depot there, and it's like, that's oh. That's a good point you make, Tasis. Yeah. <laughs> now, just because he saw it doesn't mean he just insta-holds it, but obviously. But having control over the high ground is extremely important. Yeah, he already killed the SCV. Yeah. Let's see if Bion actually uh, gets out of this. Like, he might just make a medium amount of Reapers and then switch. Yeah, he could try to backpedal if he needs to. Yeah. But like, it's not like you can't just go into a macro game after this. Like, he is killing some SCVs. Yeah. But a Hellion's on the way now. One Marine coming. Again, there's a little bit of fragility here from Ryung until he can try to stabilize. Ooh, good control by Ryung. Pulls that weak yeah. one back and makes a depot. Yeah, snipes that Marine. Wow. Well, you start to see why uh, Bion wanted to do this again. Now he's going to try to even getting scouted as quickly as you really can. He's kind of smashing. Shot the Hellion midair, man. Oh. All right, guys. Dude, I think he's going to win this. <laughs> Straight yeah. up. No, I think he's got this. Like, you can't hope to scout it quicker. GG. Damn. Bion. He should do that again. Yeah. No, I'm down for that. I don't want to. I don't care about what tanks are, what stim is, what battle cruisers are. Boring. You know, it would be really fun because we saw this from Creator, where Creator went back to his old style from literally 2012 and then smashed. Oh yeah, yeah. Double yeah. forge, like in Legacy: of The Void, double yeah. forge Colossus. Yeah. What if Bion is like, what was I doing different when I was the world champion? He's like, well, I made a lot of Reapers. And then he just makes a bunch of Reapers and wins GSL. And it gets another nerf. I mean, his spirit animal is the Reaper. Oh, for sure. Just like mine is the sloth. <laughs> the, he's, I mean, his micro there was really, really good. Uh, Ryung didn't seem to really know how to stop that, honestly. No. Well, I mean, 
if you're going for two gases, right? I mean, the Reapers get in there so fast, and even if the factory finishes, you can't. It seems like you can't accumulate enough units to actually stabilize there. Mm. Um, we've got some downtime, guys. I don't know why. I guess somebody has to use the bathroom, but which of those games was like a couple minutes, so, okay. Well, I think in this case, you're not using the bathroom to go pee, but probably to splash some water on your face and yeah. think. Punch the mirror, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, punch the mirror. Do you find it weird with this new camera angle they can see our hands? Yeah, I don't like it. I can't knit There's anymore. my hands, guys. Yeah, this is what my hands look like. There's nowhere to hide anything on the and desk. They, now I can't, you know what I used to do? Is I when I was talking to people and looking in the camera, I'd always give them the finger, and now I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know before. For yeah, for twelve yeah. years, I've been giving yeah. everyone at home the finger when I'm yeah, talking we were to them. there like this, <laughs> flipping them off. And but I now you see my hands, and it's just see. Uh, there's nothing on the desk, and you get to see these this outrageous outfit that I have, where these sleeves are not long enough, and I'm like, this is. I've it, got the same thing going on it's like i'm a modern day musketeer with these I, sleeves tasteless this jacket this season i feel like i could just like hulk break through this thing mm. you made me angry you don't <laughs> want to see me angry oh you would not you would like not. it oh, yes, we're please. right to get angry don't make me angry <laughs> yeah the hulk that guy was a child <laughs> get control of your emotions hulk i know jeez we are going into game three and it feels like it's almost too soon, man. Game one and two are so short. Uh, but someone's going to take this, either Bion or Young. Will there be barracks in the middle of the map? Let's find out. GSL Season 1. Shopify Rebellion. Bion. Team GP, Dion. What do you do here, Israel? Do you fear the third proxy to Rex Reaper? Well, it's not coming. No. What are they doing? They're making their buildings in their base. No. no I don't think you'd see it on this map, oh. anyways. Again, well, guys. Harder to jump up. A little reminder here. And I'm going to, you know, I know I've said it a couple times already, but I feel like it's worth repeating. We can have audiences again. Not the full capacity, but if you come down early, get a chair, and come watch the games in person. Or at it's the fun tail time. end of the it's pandemic. Good time. Well, you know, if you're a tourist, I mean, this is one of the big things about Seoul. You know, there's esports events every sports, day. Yeah. If, if it's not GSL, it's, you know, something some, else. Yeah, some other game. Yeah. Um, but it's a fun experience. And, you know, the, the sheer volume of events out here, it's, it's crazy. But we couldn't have audiences at them for, you know, two years because of the pandemic. So, and, I, you know, we get messages all the time on Twitter or, you know, when we're streaming, people ask us, like, you know, can I come to the studio? The answer finally is actually yes. So mm -hmm. if you've been wanting the vacation here, you're like you're not in, you don't live in Korea, you can come down, you can see the, uh, the, the games live. Yeah, and uh, imagine it's a lot of fun. I definitely went to some live events when I first moved out here, but I've been casting ever since, so I haven't really been to anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I guess that's a good point. I haven't actually been to an event. Yeah. Like, as like a fan. Yeah, I remember. The last event I was at, I was eating a hot dog, and they, like, they, I ended up getting on camera. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and I was, like, stuffing a hot dog in my mouth. Yeah. You know. That's how I'll always real, real remember you. moment, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I'm long gone, they'll remember me putting that hot dog in my yeah. mouth. What are you giggling about? Our toes? <laughs> the, we we the just like stop at our toes. He's like <laughs> <laughs> just snorting and giggling to yeah. himself for something he thought of. I'm like, well, history is written by the winners, tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> and that was what your esports career was: was eating that hot dog in a StarCraft One competition. Yeah, yeah. Like, damn, is it's he? It's like that the most hot? American thing ever. There's like. There's one white guy in the audience yeah. stuffing a hot dog in his mouth. Is, <laughs> is he that hungry? He can't wait till after the games. <laughs> like, surely he's here with people yeah. who aren't eating. Is he going to eat <laughs> twice? Or, like, what is this? That's so funny. <laughs> uh, 
it looks like Ryung's going to come out with an attack. Oh, no, never mind. He's going to actually park it up here on this ramp, hoping that, in fact, if Byun comes out, he can get the jump on him and maybe take an advantage in the game. First of all, he's pretty powerful. Cyclone's coming out on both sides. Byun's going to be popping out first. Raven now for Byun on the way. Some tech Labs making on both sides, though, so probably going to be seeing the uh, same out of Ryung. I would like to see a macro game between the two and just see how, yeah, how they deal too. with each other. I mean, Byun's, he's good at TVT, but I feel like his Terran versus Terran doesn't stand out the same way like somebody like Innovation or Maru's does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, well, he moves around and tries to, like, scuffle a bit more than, than most Terrans. Um, he's one of the guys that, like, moves his whole army. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I think TY was the greatest example of someone that, like, stays more defensive. And someone like Byun just has a terrible time against someone like TY. And then yeah. Maru picked up a lot of the ways that TY was playing the matchup. And, like, I think that over time, everyone would evolve towards that in TBT because it's just, like, superior in many ways to the full army movement. You're, like, really looking for errors out of your opponent with the full army. But we'll see if Byun does that. Like, just because it's something that we've seen a lot doesn't mean he is incapable of change or something like that. But the way he's producing, I'd be pretty surprised if Byun does not eventually move out and try to get something done. Yeah, there's that Cyclone range, man. Shoots down units in other games, so yeah. good. It's pretty far. I wanna like set up some sort of test that has to do with like, how far a locust can go compared to cyclone range. <laughs> it's like if you lock onto a locust, like can it follow it across the whole map? <laughs> you know? And let's get a recall and also Tempest anti-air in there and like just put that all together into one massive test. Nice little snipe down there outside the base. Yeah, a few units picked off by Ryan. Bringing in his ravens now for a bit of harassment. His auto church should be going down. Ooh, that's going to be a nice one. Depot being made here, so very annoying. Yeah. Right. Two so kills, but, I mean, it slows everything down. It's nice. Where's his other one? He, he had another one flying. Oh, it's down at 6 o'clock right now. Yeah. Okay, so it hasn't gone in yet. It's going to pop into the main and throw down some auto turrets there. <laughs> so Ryung being pretty active here. Uh, Ryung Stim, is that, I think it's... Oh, no, I guess they're about even on the stim upgrade. Never mind, I was going to say. Sometimes in TVT, one guy's stim will finish like five seconds before the others, and they can just like win the fight outright. <laughs> yeah. The stim marines are so much better than non-stim marines. It's it's pretty mirrored, though, the builds overall. Some small little differences. And, you know, Ryung is the one that's actually been a little bit more active on the map as far as trying to get a little bit of harassment done and everything. Diana's actually playing a, a pretty withdrawn defensive game so far. Hasn't yeah. sent out his Ravens at all, but that, you know, that's kind of nice. Like we saw, well, I guess it was only one auto turret, so it's not the biggest deal, but just a little bit more energy for, for Bian here for now. And so the third base is going to be taken a little bit later here for Bian. So I feel like Ryung is like a couple percentage points ahead here. But this game could yeah. easily still go either way. We're very much so still in the development side of the game here. Yeah. Oh, I like this move quite a bit as well. I'll pop up in that main base. Zones that out. Yeah. And I mean, every SCV kill is is pretty reasonable. I mean, the Reapers don't really scale from here, so to sack them for a few more SCVs, he's up seven workers now. That's no joke. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a good usage of those Reapers to just send them in and try to get whatever extra damage you can get. But yeah, I like Ryung's play a little bit better, but now uh, we're getting to the point where the, the real fights are going to happen. And um, there's going to be opportunities here for Beyond. He's going to be taking the initiative a little bit faster. And again, Cyclone. Good attempt there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. I yeah. appreciate that. May as well sack it if you get a tank that's pretty sick. Yeah. Definitely worth trading a Cyclone for a tank. Ryung, and look, this is this is the moment right now where Byun is roaming with his entire army. We have a very defensive stance from Ryung. We'll see if he sends out any harassment. If he sends out any small forces. 
has that sensor tower up, so pretty solid defense. He also has a unit to the south, kind of watching if Bion tries to come in from that angle again. I like that location, actually, that Bion just took. Right, the kind of almost random siege location yeah, where, where you're looking for like a free volley, you can get a lot of damage. With dude, that. you can win a lot of TBTs like that, yeah. where you just have a, a position that they're not anticipating. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the obvious spot, like right above a ramp or uh, anything like that. And yeah, you can walk right into that and eat a lot of damage. Good scan though, and Vyun's probably gonna have to reposition. Yeah, he's gonna unsiege and move. I like it. Vyun's playing pretty solid. Down a little bit in his army supply. Has good air. Oh, God. Okay, well, armor shreds on both sides. And a lot of disables as well. But Bion actually going to take uh, advantage of that air. So, very nicely done. And so, there is a fourth base now that Bion has. He's got some presence in the middle of the map. Uh, but Ryung is having a little squad move around here to the right. And if this doesn't go met with anything, I think he's going to just kill this command center off. Yeah, he might. It looks like uh, some Marines try to come down. Oh, and he will weird. pick up and get out of there. Sends a few Marines down. Not the best micro right there, but... The idea is very good, right? They have most of their armies kind of in a little bit of a stalemate, and then he sends a little bit off to the side. Almost gets good damage, doesn't this time. Oh my gosh, the Vikings of Yun come in and actually get gunned down a little bit by these Marines. Yeah. A lot of damage over there. A little sloppy by Byun. Kind of bleeding off probably more than he needed. But again, uh, right now, Byun up a base. We don't have that many SCVs in it yet, but this this does put pressure on Young to kind of match this position and get an expansion of his own on this side of the map. 2-2 Two -two gonna be finishing up for Byun a little bit quicker. A little bit down in army supply right now. Feels like he's being boxed in a bit by Ryung. But Byun has air control. And if I'm not mistaken, I saw a Liberator in there. No, never mind. No. It was just meta back. Okay, so uh, nice shot over there on oh, the no, there is a Liberator. Okay, yeah. Where so, is it? Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah bottom right. Okay. And here's the thing if you have the Viking advantage, you can push their tanks back with Liberators which I would like to see here. Oh, he's actually down in Viking slightly now. And Ryung is adding a couple Star oh, Wars. He's just gonna go for it. Really well timed out here by Byun. He's gonna get at least two tanks. Oh man, but there's another whole siege line back there to answer that tactic. That was good though. And we're getting into that phase where we're gonna see more and more Vikings made. Whoever has that Viking advantage can start to push their opponent down. Byun actually sends a Liberator out to the side. Sam check looks like it's heading towards the third. Stemming by most of the army here. Oh, look at that. He's forced back, though. Ooh. Yeah, that was rough. Not really making much headway here. If this no man's land in the middle has been created a couple different times here. Vian is up on 90 SCVs. Yeah. Some TY level stuff but, right but there. That means that the army is much bigger here for Ryung, right? So let's see how this next engagement goes. Well, that is a lot of Marines it's just showing their way through. In. And a lot of these tanks not even getting their shots off. Yeah. And he can actually go around the army now. I mean, he can go right into where these bases are and start to take fights here. This is a huge problem right now for Byun. Yeah, it's a, a bit rough. Ryung getting a lot of damage. The siege tanks blocking Byun out from helping out. Loses a command center. His air being completely oh. decimated. He yeah. might even land the Vikings it's, on the tanks at it, this point. You're really feeling the difference in the, the, the number of uh, attacking units here from Ryung. And I, well, I actually worry that this game might just be completely lost right now for Beyond. I mean, especially losing all these tanks like this, that's kind of the asset you're building throughout the game. Mm -hmm. um, and to lose them, and a lot of it wasn't even stuff that was traded. Now, Ryung needs to be careful not to overextend. It's not like Bion doesn't have units to defend here. I mean, we see plenty on screen right now, but Bion is hurting. He's lost control of this game. He's going to have to weather a lot of attacks if he wants to try to come back into this. Yeah, this is tough. Look at that siege line he's got. What a containment. 
course, he's got a better economy right now with those additional bases. Uh, he is up in workers after dealing that much damage to the economy of Yun as well. And it's hard to imagine him losing his uh, siege tank lead or his Viking lead, and that's like kind of the the two main things that matter right now. Right. How does so, Byun fight back? I don't know. I, I do want to praise Ryung for a second here because this is really the sign of a good player is when you take big wins and then you don't overextend. Like, he actually took some time to build back up. Nice Shredder sure. coming in here. Yeah, disables on some of the tanks here as well. I think, I think uh, Byun is still fine at this point. But I do think he needs to actually send some of his bio out on the map. Like, that's the only thing he's actually beating Ryung in right now is that bio count. So maybe being mobile with a couple groups of Marines, right? Send a yeah. couple medevacs out the side, like way around, try to find some way in to get a little bit of damage. Okay, there he goes. He is walking out through the left. So that's good. And he's got a siege line that looks pretty hard to break right now. Definitely better uh, technicality here for Ryung. I mean, Bion's managed to power back up to being maxed out. Uh, and this is a good move. Look at this. All right. Yeah. This is what we're looking for here from Bion. Gets in, takes down this orbital. Or I think he will. No, maybe not. Uh, he's just going to try to... Yeah. He's basically tearing through this base, trying to just kill whatever he can, but still try to be on the run from anything that can chase this down and deal with it. Now, is there anything else he can do at the same time? Like, can he send something else out now? Like, right now, while all Ryung's attention is up here, it doesn't look like he's doing it. Mm, trying to break the siege line might not be yeah. the move. Well, I mean, I thought that, you know, for a little bit we were going to see Byun get beaten down and, and forced to tap out, but honestly, he's kind of just bounced back. A bit, yeah. Nice siege up. Just picked off a tank there. He's taking damage on his own, though. They're even on those siege tanks. Way more Marines here for Bion. No medevacs out to speak of. Very little air. I don't know if there really is a soft spot here for Bion. I mean, you can see that Ryung's trying to find one, but like everywhere that our camera pans. It's like, yeah, he's fine there too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's going to be equipped to actually try to force a fight, but it's really exhibits the resilience of Beyond Man. Yeah. Oh, this is not a good place to try to fight in. Very sloppy exchange. Well, I, I think breaking tank lines right now is not very doable. But I think the other move that he made, like another one of those is probably as good as you can try to come back, but look at this, the disables, he's coming in on top of this base, Siege is up. I think we're just about near the end here. Like, look at this, the air dominance, plus this many Siege tanks and Marines coming up to help out. You're not gonna be able to push that all back, not efficiently in any way. Yeah, this is getting bad, man. You know, the, such a patient game here for Marion. It's starting to pay off, and you can see that Beyond's going to try to get some counterplay by maybe pushing through the bottom, but right now, bases are getting dropped. Mm -hmm. Well, he kind of breaks out of the contain, but losing a base for it, and Ryung's still up supply, still mining very well. Two more starports come up for Ryung. Nice disables on these tanks. Yeah, I mean, this game is going to go on. Yon is hurting. He's trying to climb back up in supply for a while now. But it doesn't seem like Ryung is able to find the finishing move, you know, the killing blow, so to speak. Yeah, very hard to actually kill him when he has this many tanks sieged up. But, but, you know, you can see the supplies just over time here. Yeah, I'm having yeah. a hard time keeping anything going. And it looks like he might be able to save this, but I think there's going to be, yeah, there's there's just nothing to defend over here. I think we're probably going to have to tap out in a second. I mean, 
he's just not able to keep any of his bases here. Keep in mind, guys, Ryung is going untouched on his side of the map. GG, yep. that's it. Yeah. Ryung looking so good. Yeah, I think his, his siege line setup was really fantastic there. He kept that air control as well, which is so important. After he won it the first time from Vion, Vion never really got it back. And uh, well done. Vion having a very tough day today. He's got to really show up next week if he's going to have a chance to get out of this group. Like, really show up. He has to kind of dominate. I'm really excited for how well Ryung's playing. Oh, for it's sure. It's so cool. I mean, yeah. he's always been good, but, uh, you know, a lot of these GSLs we've had, he's been, look, he's like not the, the main focus of the show, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he's old school. He's been around since, like, the first GSL. Yeah. Maybe second, I'm not sure. But anyways, I mean, he's been here since the beginning. He's an OG, but he's playing so well right now. Yeah. Bjorn as well, by the way. Another OG yeah. from season one. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a fun day. We're going to show you the scores just momentarily here. No one advances. No one's yeah. eliminated as of yet. This is the new format. We're in the round of 10. So, uh, I mean, this is kind of weird for us, too. We've never quite casted a tournament quite like this. Mm -hmm. But we're halfway through Group A. And when we come back on Thursday, we're going to be doing Group B. So yes, we really won't right. be able to draw any conclusions uh, for this whole first week. Yeah, but, you know, we see where things are pointing right now, right? Like, yeah. for this group, though, it's pretty tight. It seems like Bion is the most likely player to get eliminated. Everyone else kind of in it. And Ragnarok performing very well. Yeah, he's performing well. I think a lot of people thought he would be the weakest player in this group. He mm -hmm. is not struggling against even Rogue. That's right. In fact, he basically had Rogue beat until he lost that game. Yeah, yeah. Rogue is up on top of the 2-0, but only plus two on points, which is the very important thing that we're looking at. Right. And Bion, as you can see, minus three. That's that's rough. He needs to start winning that back immediately. The top three don't get eliminated. Yeah, that's right. This is about survival right now. Yeah. And then after round of 10, we go to round of six. Yes, and the round of four, the first place players go into the round of four. Yes. Yes. So, of course, winning first place is the best. Second place is much better than third. But fourth and fifth are bad. You do not want that. No. So you're trying to keep your head above water here. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the format throughout the year. Round of 20, round of 10, round of 6, round of 4, finals. That's right. So our next match. Thursday, same time, same place. Yes. And, uh, yeah, week one, Dark Maru Creator, DRG, and Hero will lot, be going at it. Yeah, a lot of exciting matches there. No mirror matchups at all, it looks like, for that day. It's kind of funny. Yeah, well, that's nice. Um, and then when we come back, you know, it's going to be wrapping up uh, Group A, and then we wrap up Group B on Thursday. Um, yeah, and we're going to get closer and closer to having a GSL champion. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what the round of six is actually going to end up looking like. Like, who's going to go directly to that round of four? Yeah. Uh, like, right now, it looks like Rogue probably from this group as he is in first place. But we're going to see on Thursday. I mean, Dark and Maru, that's a hard choice. That's a very tough choice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be some great games uh, there as well. And again, like we've said throughout these uh, this broadcast today, we can have an audience. Not to full capacity yet, but we're getting there. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy for that. It is way more fun to cast with people here. Yes, yes, it's very nice having Eerie an audience. Studio. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, I hope more people come down because we didn't have that many people today. A lot of people didn't know that it was, it was kind of open. I didn't that we could have people here today. That's so. funny. And they uh, even told him, so. <laughs> yeah, but I don't listen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's good to be getting stuff back to normal. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's... Uh, about it. One quick thing, we do have the third place match for ASL up on the Africa TV YouTube, so check that out. Yeah, so Finals if you're be up still in a few days. craving some more StarCraft, it's there, it's waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be getting the ASL finals recorded and banged out. And yeah, very yeah. shortly here. So, All right, guys, that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us. We will see you Thursday. We love you. Bye-bye.